that is a well we do this is um okay. this is a lot of work and right. has grown so i needed okay input did um and then did there's Al, the Al, Al, yeah. that, uh, i'll go into that I'll, there's i have an update for everybody on that and the uh, only other thing is that um we've i contacted uh, aj o'connell and told him we'll not be discussing the representation tonight and okay but we will we may discuss Send him. I'm gonna send the commission the order of commission that you come on okay. home with the town meeting. Okay. okay. That seems to be it. I will. Good evening, everyone. I'll call the meeting to order since we have a quorum. This is the July 23rd Conservation Commission meeting, and uh, why don't we start with. Uh, old new business. So, a uh, minor project at 112 Colonial Drive. So, I received a request for a minor project. Started out as a as a pool. But when the paperwork came in, it turned into a little bit more. So uh, I printed this out, and some of the setbacks are on here. I just want the commission to uh, go through this okay. and see if you think it qualifies for. A minor project, um, and my <coughs> my concern was the fact that there was several eight items plus on it. Um, what we're looking at here is a pool that's approximately 50 feet away from a wetland that was delineated by Norris Environmental on three on two sides, but one side it falls short by 40 feet. Um, what do you mean it's false? Uh, this side Close. right here, it's only 40 feet away from that from that wetland line. That would be the left hand side. Yeah. East. West. West. So he he had Norris Environmental flag the wetlands. Flag the wetlands, but not put those flags on a plan. Um, the owner's right here, uh, but I'm going to try to take you through most of this, and if you have any questions. So the flags them. are in the field? Flags are in the field. Did you see them? I did not see them. This came in yesterday, and there was a little bit of confusion prior to that on who flagged them and getting uh, verification of the flagging. So, so who put the stars on the plan? I put the stars. You put the based on the, the flags that he, the wetland scientists had put in. Okay, um, so. And then about a month ago, I had the plot plan actually done, so I remember that the plot plan was. So I kind of did like. Approximate? It should be pretty, it should be really close. Because I did from, you know, the, from the property line to the house and measured different ways just to make sure that it matches. You, you literally yeah. measured it with tape? Oh, or yeah. Like yeah, yeah. So uh, I just wanted to understand whether yeah, you whether you looked at this plot plan. So and the, the left side actually, where the property line is, it jumps jumps in um, a good like you know, maybe two feet or so. Um, the same thing on the far right. Okay. The house too it jumps in a lot. Okay. So in itself, that first item, the pool, being for the most part 50 feet away, that seems like our standard minor projects above ground pool. And that wouldn't have been a problem. Um, <coughs> oh, it's an above ground pool. Yeah. <coughs> and what's under? What's there now where the pool would go? It's flat. Um, there's grass there now. Um, there is conservation part of it probably in the outer, probably the last maybe 15, you know, feet on the top 
is you know is, is uh, trees and stuff like that, but it's all flat. You know, the pool area is shown. That's all flat. Uh, it's all flat and grass. It's it's flat to there. Then when the pool area and it goes to the house, it slopes up, probably about four or five feet, and right in front of the pool towards the house, I would probably have to put like a retaining wall. Um, just a. It almost going to be like it's going to be in above ground, but the level. Gonna, it's almost going to be the same level as the ground where the house comes out. So is the retaining wall going between the pool and the house? Yes. Yeah. Or north of the pool? Um, be between the house and the pool, it's a little bit darker. It's a dark Do we have line. to cut down any trees? There's one right in the middle, and I'm trying to see if I can relocate it. What kind of tree is it? Do you know? I don't know. It's probably about between 20 to 30 feet tall. Um, is it sure a maple is. or is it a hemlock, pine? I don't know. I know they've, because we moved there about a year ago, about 10 months ago, and then I know they've trimmed it, and they've <coughs> cut, you know, a lot of it. Um, I would like to move it to, you know, over the right side of the pool. If, you know, I haven't talked to someone yet. 20 foot tree? Uh, be real depending about what kind of tree it is. Mm. Could be yeah. very. If I can move it, I'll move it. If I can't, you know, mm. I'll, you know I'll, I'll probably end up putting something else. So I wanted, would like to put something on the right side. Um, so that's number the second thing. So now we have a pool and this retaining wall. I hope you can see it on the plans. That that's going to be part of a minor project. So this, this minor project came in as a pool and it's got to be growing. Um, so <coughs> the other thing is number five. Just look down to number five. You'll see that. that number is five. What do you mean? Number Circle. There's a, on the back. Garage addition, approximately 15 by 25. That would include a full foundation. Full yeah. foundation. That is 82 feet away from that flag that's noted as being 40 feet away from the pool. I'm a little confused where the wood deck is and where the garage. This is this. That's the, the garage number five. The deck is on the second floor. Oh, okay. So the so garage is going to somehow be built underneath the existing deck. Garage the under the deck? It, from the front of the house, it slopes back. So when you walk out from the, from the basement, you actually walk out um, right onto level ground. And it stays level for about um, 16 feet. Then it, then it does like a slope. Nine feet slopes down. Probably about you know five feet high. Is the garage going to have a flat roof? A flat roof. There's actually going to be a there's a small deck right now. It shows on the plan what's existing. Um, the deck will probably go across, you know, on top of the garage. Oh, so you're taking the existing deck down and building a new deck on yeah. top of the garage yeah. roof. Okay. Yeah. Now, now I'm with you. Is, is there a slope in the backyard? There's a slope. There's a little slope as you come out, and then it slopes for about nine. For about nine feet, it does like a, you know, like a, almost like a diagonal where they have like plants and shrubs mm -hmm. over there. Um, and then that's where the pool, I have where the pool is going to start, is right at the bottom of that slope. Right. Um, so that's where I, where I want to kind of put the retaining wall in between where that slope starts to come down. How about after the pool? The after the pool is all flat. It's so all where, flat. The, where, where the pool mm -hmm. is and that whole area all the way back is all flat. Is there going to be a deck around the pool? That's yeah, that's, that's the shaded that, area. Yeah, around it. Yeah. So I'm thinking like either like a not a wood, but you know like a something waterproof, um, and maybe against the house, maybe some kind of stone. Um, so I, I I'd like to take a look at the site before we uh, make a determination. So if, you know I'm a, I'm asking. You know, again, this came in as a, mm -hmm. the pool, and then as it was brought finally to me, it, it had this list. Um, a lot of things are pretty far away from the wetland. It's a new Strangely driveway, enough. though, garage, full foundation, pool. Yeah. Um, and I said I just didn't didn't know. I know I started out and said it might it's a you know 50 feet away is okay for an above ground pool minor project. I wasn't sure about any of this, and I think it's a good idea as the commission looks. But if if you, I mean, time might be of the essence when we're talking about a pool. Do you so want to build it this season? The, the the pool I would like to put up this season. The garage is 
not really important, but it kind of plays a role where everything fits. So that's why I kind of put it in. I mean, the, the garage might even go up maybe next year or the year after. You know, it's not that's not a an issue too much. But if I at least wanted to put the pool and probably do the decking around it, um, probably this year. I was looking at this part of the Wetlands Protection Act about four hours ago, and uh, they do talk about minor activities being 50 feet away. And that's the list. And one of the big ones on the list is the uh, conversion of uh, existing lawn to accessory uses, mm -hmm. pools, mm -hmm. decks, all of that stuff. Now, I don't recall reading anything about if you do three items on the list, then, then <laughs> you know, you, you, it's too bad you can't. So it's, without looking at it again, it seems to fit. It seems to fit. The, the exceptions, you know, that you don't have to file. What, I mean, what's your experience? I, I, I think when, you know, 82 feet away for a full foundation and the driveway where number six is, which is for the most part outside, outside I mean, it's just right on the line. But there's, yeah. you know, there's I, a lot of activity on This was, yeah. you know, this to me, a good one for everyone to uh, talk about yep. and if it, like I said time may be of the essence but if you just want to look at it and it seems like it's going to qualify well uh, then that works but if it's definitely in anyone's opinion going to be uh, an RDA then we could actually get started on that and have that ready for the next meeting actually that garage might be closer to the wetland line on the east than it is the wetland line on the north mm. Mm. If it wraps around, yeah. Yeah, well, the next flag from where that arrow is that says Steve Erickson is probably where the I and incorporated is. Oh, I was so going to ask back. that. Yeah. So it goes kind of so that's parallel gonna, to the yeah. west. Yeah, I did see another flag yesterday further down to the other person's property that was parallel with that. I mean, the, the fact that it's flat back there, too, is, makes a big difference. Yes. I think you could potentially qualify for a minor project, but without seeing it, I'd be hesitant to. Yeah. Go. Okay. Well, let's put it on the site visit list. Why don't we do year. that? I mean, if you if you uh, are in a time crunch and want to submit a request for the request for determination of applicability, then we can do it on the site visit and actually vote on that next meeting. If we go ahead and look at the site and then determine that it already is necessary, then it'd be another two week delay. So if if um, schedule's not that critical to you, we'd be happy to go ahead and look and then talk about it and discuss which is which is more appropriate. But if it's if it's a schedule issue, um, just go for the RDA and we can we can move quicker. I don't think a notice of intent is um, required, but on a site visit could be different, but I don't see that as an issue. I, I think with, with, we could ask for all the um, conditions we want with this, and it's the difference between these two, um, the RDA and the minor project, is basically getting the commission out there to take a look for themselves so they can make, right. you know, good conditions. Are we, are we dealing with uh, Aquifer Protection District here? Do I'm we not, know? I'm not sure. Do you happen to know if you're within the Aquifer <coughs> Protection District for the town? Where, where is Colonial Drive? I'm not familiar with it. Off uh, Dana, um, right off uh, Hable Street. So Hable Street where uh, Killam School oh, is. Oh, okay, all right. So right around if you follow, Dana's the first right, and if you follow that to the end is Colonial, and then it's the last house on the left. Okay. I, don't, I don't think that's in the, I think they have the districts on the other side. It's on the north yeah, side of town. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking impervious you, cover. You this with Glenn? I saw you talking about I did, yeah. I mean, I was, he was he the didn't mention that. Yeah. No, no, no. So that, yeah. in our sir, uh, that customer service department we're in, is Glenn takes care of the Aquifer Protection District when people come to the counter. Okay. <laughs> so okay. Um, I agree with Jamie. I think, you know, if, if you want, if, if speed is of the essence, then, yeah. then, um, we can go out on the next site visit and look at it, um, it while you're filing a, a request for determination of applicability. Um, it is more expensive for an RDA. I forgot yeah, than a minor right. permit. It's, yeah, it's not. Minor permit. Yeah, it's. It, and again, the only thing that uh, that's for me was 
the multitude of projects, of items. the retaining wall, right. where that right. stockpile area is going. They're right. for the most part right. out. And I think we should probably, you know, start adding these things to our minor project list. If we're definitely whatever it is, fifty feet away, then you know. Because we have a, we even have a foundation in this one. Yeah, and and I don't know if that retaining wall is is gonna be within fifty feet. No, it's not. No, 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 no. it's not. So Good from no, that standpoint I would I would think a request for determination would be more applicable. Like meaning it's not within it's well it's more than fifty feet, right? Yeah, the retaining wall is a lot yeah. more than fifty feet. Yeah. As um, is the garage, but the pool is looks like it's forty plus or minus. Forty's on a, on the one side. And it may be you know, maybe I didn't measure it. It could be plus or minus for sure. Yeah. And then and then that decking that would be with um like concrete posts, concrete yes. footings and yeah. so that's pretty minimal if earthwork and having this list to start with it would have for me it would have been an RDA. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. Yeah. It's just that we found ourselves here with and one then day it before grew. the meeting, and I said, hey, yeah. I'll just talk yeah. to the commission. Yeah. So. I, just, again, I wanted to list, because things, you can't really do one thing without the other. And you know, yeah. having a, a hill, and I'm like, you know, as, as I was talking with him, yeah. I was like, oh, it's, you know, probably it's going to be, I mean, I probably don't have to put a retaining wall, but it, I mean, I would like to, to, to make it look nicer. How high will that retaining wall be? It's the same. It's probably between four and five feet. See, that will require a building permit and the so structural engineers. So four feet is, yeah. if it's under four feet, I won't have to. If it's over four feet, it needs a building permit, which if they're going to dig down, obviously, to to make it sturdy and make it sound, it's, it's probably going to be over five feet when it's done. Yeah, yeah I mean, I would. I mean, it's going to end up being the same level as the pool, which is 52 inches, um, which is still over five feet, which, uh, well, it's still over four feet. Yeah, I mean, at the high school, they built a retaining wall. They built it three times because they couldn't get it right. Retaining walls are not that easy to build. Well, so there's, a, so there's only a few I people would, that would uh, I would suggest that. doing it right the first time rather than <laughs> redoing it and redoing it. Or worse yet, yeah, had it fall just move this, so I don't want that thing moving. Yeah, no, yeah. you don't want it. Ever. Yeah. No. So do you have any indication what... What, what you're going to either either trim this back to well I mean for now I, I mean I could I mean the, the garage is not an issue um, for now um, but, but the retaining, the, the, I mean the retaining wall I mean if I did all the work around it I would probably leave that space you know if I were to present it again um, for that because that would probably that doesn't I don't think that falls under the you know this this category um, you don't so, think I mean, whatever's the easier. I mean, I just I was. If you think you're going to be building that garage in the next few years, I'd go ahead and put it on here, so you don't have to come back in front of us. And re-permit. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me ask you this: What if you came for all these projects separately as minor projects? Would we approve them all? Probably. Well, no, I don't know that retaining wall. Yeah, I'm hesitating on the. I don't know. It's. We don't, retaining, retaining wall we don't know where it is. We don't right. know how it's going to be built. It's it's kind of like we'll figure it out when, when we get to that point. So there's a lot of ifs. Now, if those things are just turned into, the commission only cares about erosion control and stockpile, and the retaining wall always has a footing and then just built, then cool. You know, let's then let's just per, uh, committed condition that part. So it doesn't but matter. But the retaining wall is probably that. 70, 80 feet from the wetland. No, no I, I think it's I don't know. No, over the here? Uh, corner of the garage is 82 feet away. The garage that he proposes. But so let me just where is this retaining wall? Is it it's this three. line under it's three? This three. Dark, yes. line, right. It's the stark line under three. It goes all the way across. Oh, wait a minute. Where, where is Is it here? 3A and 3B. It's right there. 3A. Yeah, which is you know, between 70 and 80 three. feet from the wet one, I think. 3 to 3A. So right above number five is 80 three feet away. Yeah. So it's closer 75. than that. Probably 75 feet, something like that. I guess I'm thrown off by that 40 foot from the corner of the deck to the start. Oh, yeah. Just so you know, the deck is, would you say, 25 feet? The, the deck is yeah, 25 feet. 25 feet from front to back. So it's 40 feet, and then front to back of the deck is 25 feet. 
You need 25 feet up to the garage? No, just to the retaining wall. To the retaining wall. So that would make it 65 feet from the wetlands mm -hmm. to the retaining wall, approximately. But then on the east side, you're just at 50 feet. Oh, no, you're not. Sorry. Right. That's that's 46.7 yeah. from the stone wall. Sorry. Yeah, it looks like it is 50 feet from the wetland on the east side. Uh, it's really on the edge. Yeah. It's really on the edge, I, you know. Yeah, no, it we is. Need, we yes. need... Oh, no, yeah. it'd be good to you know to go see it because you know yeah. just that little we'll slope. That. It's it's not like a hill where it has a lot of stockpile. It's like more of a straight angle. So I mean, yeah. it probably won't be anything. Okay. Well, we'll put it. Um, if you're still interested in going forward with with doing this, we'll put it on our next site visit list, and and um, and you'll have to get back to us as to whether you're going to file an RDA for the for the list of work. Um, or, you know. I mean, you could file a pool if you want to pull one right now. Right. As is my project. Right. But the, you, you don't want to put the pool in until you get the retaining wall in, right? It, um, I have to get someone. It, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm going to see, you know, what I, I mean, it, I almost don't even have to put a retaining wall in. I mean, I'd like to just because this, the other deck that comes off the house, you know, and then, then it goes down to, you know, I mean, it's more, actually, it doesn't matter. I could put the pool without putting the retaining wall. So it's 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 up to you. <laughs> you know what? Um, I mean, if I got a pool for the pool, I would probably at least order it. Yeah. You know, at least get it scheduled, and then hopefully, you know, because it's probably like two weeks out before they can so we do we anything. We did talk about both options, so mm -hmm. um, I told them maybe we're going to be doing a. RDA between you know now and Monday so if that's you feel more comfortable being consistent with what other things have, that you've done here then we can get we won't be losing any time between now and the next meeting yeah. so yeah. I mean with proper erosion control and, and our, our standard Restrictions. I don't, I don't see a, a major issue or threat to the resource area from this plan. With the pool. With any of it. With all of it. But this retaining wall, it goes right up to the property boundary. I mean, what happens at that point? Not our concern, thank goodness. But if so, you're you're saying from this start point. The start point to here is 65 feet plus or minus 65 feet, so still within jurisdictional area. Yeah, um, and you're saying if erosion control is, is handled, yeah, retaining wall 65 feet away, yeah, can be added to the minor project list, you know, with conditions, yeah. then that's great, you know, yeah. that's yeah. Under four feet. I mean, if it's, I don't know, four feet, five feet, if it becomes something where you need a structural engineer to draw, does that make a difference? Well, I mean, what I'm saying is if the applicant came before us with an RDA, based on what I know, what I see here, I would be inclined to issue a negative determination. Mm. So is and that what you suggest? Uh, if uh, again, if he if he wants to move quickly, yes. But if he wants wants us to look at it, we might go out there and look and see that a minor project would be appropriate. All right. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to give you the gist of what you're saying. Um, we're struggling with a couple of things. Yep. Does, does all your projects a fit in the minor project list, which some of them aren't defined? Yep. So there's going to be that question out there. It seems like they could. They want to do a site visit. So that's your roll in the dice. You may, if you don't fill out the other application and have that ready, and they decide that it doesn't fit and they don't want to stretch that minor project list to accommodate these other projects for everyone else in town, yep. then you're going to lose those two weeks. Yep. So if you just file the request for determination of applicability um, and have that in for the next meeting, 
it sounds like you're, you're going to be good to go after that. So that might be the best thing to do. Okay. So uh, I'll uh, give you a call tomorrow. Okay. Sounds good. All right. All right, so. I don't know if we don't have to close this, but. That's it? Well, yeah, when the uh, hearing. Yeah. Yeah, it's not here. Not a hearing. Oh. <laughs> okay. Some of these get involved. Okay. I know. I do know we have a scout waiting. Yep. Okay. Go, go ahead. Lee. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, so my name is uh, Brandon Lee. Uh, I'm a scout of Troop 704. Okay. Uh, so I'm trying to do a, a Eagle Scout project, and the project is to uh, build a boardwalk, a 24-foot-long boardwalk along the Pine Ridge Trail. And uh, I believe we have the uh, presentation list. Uh, so the project is to uh, build a 24-foot long uh, boardwalk along the Pine Ridge Trail. And um, the specific area that I'm planning to install is uh, covered in mud, but there's no running water uh, during the year. And uh, I measured the deepest part to be uh, about four to five inches deep. Um, and that's just mud, there's no running water. Deep, deepest part meaning? Of the, of the mud from the depth of the mud. The depth of, so, so top of mud to? To, like, <laughs> when I hit it hard, so. so maybe, okay. Yeah. okay. Refusal. Okay. So, um. Maybe bedrock. I don't think so. The, uh, the plan for the actual boardwalk is to, um, simply have, uh, two, uh, it will be comprised of four, two layers of four by four, and the decking will be uh, from uh, two by sixes, uh, excuse me, one by sixes of uh, Trex composite decking. So um, the total height will be a, about nine inches. So you're not using the standard design the trail committee has, uh, has been using? No. For this area, the trail committee said that they just wanted something sim uh, simpler. And uh, just, as you can see, it's only it's four by four. Okay. So uh, this is what I ended up after a few visits to the trail so. Did they give you a hard time? Uh, well, there, there's much discussion on the, um, the design. I mean, there's a lot going back and forth. And uh, I also visited uh, uh, engineers, but basically they just told me if it works, it works. I <laughs> 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 love it. So, love it. There's a lot of discussion. the truth. Which, yeah, which one did you talk to? So, um, so there was also some discussion of like, using uh, additional 4x4s or like corrugated pipes or something else to, um, in case there were, uh, the height was an issue. Uh, because the decking will end up being at tops like four inches above the surface of the mud. So um, I, I think um, Mr. Gerard. Are you saying it be four inches because they're going to sink down a little bit? You do right, a, they will you be. You do two four by fours. Yes. So yeah. it's seven inches anyway. Yeah. And it's going to sink down in. Yeah, it would probably, it would sink down into the mud. So. Um, uh, Mr. Toronto mentioned that it may be an issue for the height wise. Um, so uh, I left that up to discussion. So yes, I don't think it's seven inches though. I'm, I'm looking at the, the plan. And I think that on the right-hand side, it shows that there's a stringer. And if that sunk into the mud, that would be the limit of whatever the height was. And then it's just the four by four. So to have another one kind of across that, you would be blocking it off also. So, you know, the, the deck might be seven inches above, but the gap between right. the mud and the bottom of the decking yeah is going to be three and a half inches. And so these four by fours are going to rest on the mud. Or in the mud. Right? Or in the mud. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Or so below the mud. Okay. No, so below everyone's the on top of this. We're, so are we blocking something from getting from one side to the other? Right. That's, you know, obviously we're creating this alleyway or, and if it sinks down, you know, what's there? I haven't seen this when it, 
when it might be filled up with water. So that's what we're discussing. Well, I went out right after that big storm we had a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. and there was more water than I'd ever seen there, and it still wasn't very significant. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know if it just drains off by itself, heading off there. Or How much standing water was there, Terry? Like an inch or two? Yeah. And it was standing but not falling. Yeah, not falling, but there's about two inches of water. Usually I see maybe yeah. half inch of water a little bit. This was, this was right after that big rain. Yeah, one side of it is kind of more you know, forest, and the other side opens up yeah. into a, you know, well and Well, if it is a problem, it'll be gone. It'll just float away. Right. I mean, seriously, it'll, it'll wash it away. How are you going to yeah. keep it level? Level? Um, so we were planning on using, like, uh, adding uh, dirt or possibly even using pieces of uh, rock or cement uh, from the, from the uh, compost area. Under the four by fours? Yes, under and level it that way. Hmm. So I, well, I was just gonna say, getting back to the, the height, I just wanna say one more thing. If anyone's ever seen a turtle stuck between two railroad tracks, yeah. I just wanna make sure that there's enough. Cause he could get inside, never find his way out, you know, things like that could happen. So I want enough space that, you know, issues like that, that you know, don't come up. I, think I don't think three and a half inches. This is 24 no, feet. 24 feet long, yeah. So it's 24 feet before it hits a barrier, such as roots and trees, so up and dry on both sides. So if something's going up and around, there might be, you know, it might just send them off in the wrong direction. It is that great design you guys have with those, you know. Corrugated. Yeah. Corrugated, yeah. It would, is it cost prohibitive over 24 feet to put this? Because this eliminates that problem of the height. No, I don't it would just be a step that. up to this bridge, well, it, it, or it would have to be longer. You, when you come to that, you, you're coming down a hill, yeah. So you can butt it right up into it. So you could butt it right up to the hill. when you're coming down. Mm -hmm. When when you finish and you head west, it's pretty flat. Then it flattens out, and then it starts going up just a little bit, I think. So you probably do some fill there, or just have your last section just slope down a little. Bit. If, well, if you can make it, I, I would yield to the Trails Committee, but it, it, if it works, I'd prefer to see that other design. Well, see what? Yeah. Your, your standard design with the corrugated. The corrugated. Uh, we could use a smaller, we have some rather large piping, 8 or 12 inches, but I think this is 6 inch. Maybe the 6 inch. They have 12. I think I've seen 12 as well as used on the trails. Hmm? I have seen 12. Yeah, but we thought that was just too much it's because true, yeah. we're, not, we're trying to keep it. Yeah, if they uh, have yeah. six, six, they have six inches, sufficient. that would be pretty good. Because that's not going to sink as much. Well, do, they, do these sink at all? Do, do, do the pipes sink at all? Because <coughs> um, well, when we put them in, we usually put in rebar. And then, <coughs> and then fasten them in there. Take the rebar down as far until it's solid, and then we'll fasten the oh. frame into it. And that's the reason why I'm asking, because this is no difference from an engineering standpoint, whether you have pipe or you have... Four by fours, it's the same thing. They're sleepers, they spread the load out. But the four by fours in the mud. Yeah, I was are thinking. Gonna sink, they're gonna deteriorate. Well, I was thinking, if, if you have those four by fours, I mean, one thing I was thinking of, and I'm not an engineer, but you know, you, you could almost put a piece of board underneath that to make it a bigger footprint to kind of carry, bigger like footprint. snowshoe it, you know, underneath, attach another. Plank, but then it's more wood. It's more supply. More plank you know, and that would plank. stop the that would stop the four by four from sinking into the mud. But, that, but what I'm saying is, from 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 a pressure standpoint, right. the pipe and the two by four is no different. If the pipe doesn't sink, the two by four is not going to sink. Same amount of weight on it. Right. Yeah. Right. But in fact, the pipe probably will sink more than the two by four because it's rounded and it's going to reach a point at which. Right. It's going to bear enough that it's not going to sink anymore. Whereas the, the equal pressure four by four is equal across, except that the pipe would be you know six inches, and here correct. we're talking three and a half. Correct. If it sunk four, yeah. it's correct. So it's not going to sink four inches. It's not going to sink may four over, inches. May over time sink somewhat. It certainly would sink two inches. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if it's six inch pipe, eight inch pipe, you know, something like that. I'm going like eight inch pipe, but. You could work with the wood too. I mean, you could get a six by six, and instead of you know just running a, like a sleeper across and then building on top of that, 
you could do something with like a footing where you yeah. had a six by six and you put a notch in it and then you just started supporting all these things across and then you could maintain whatever height you want but at a minimum of six inches or so and that would be pretty secure I mean you just that's just one more piece of wood and some fantastic cutting so I, th I think three and a half inches is definitely too tight for wildlife movement um, Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, exactly. Right. It's a little tunnel. Put lights in there. It's a food corridor. It's a food corridor. Yeah. Turtle restrooms. 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 I guess I'm. Uh, I mean, those those that standard design with those pipes. Oh, it yeah. works so well. They're standard across the town. If it's not broken, don't fix it. I I, I just like them. But that, again, I yield to the trail committee. But well, I, I know when we first came over, we didn't want to have it too high, too high. But a six inch height probably would. Why didn't you want it too high? Well, there wasn't any reason for it. You didn't really want you to build a big, right. a big yeah. structure yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. All we're trying to yeah. do is just get to a muddy area. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 No reason for a bridge. We just wanted to have kind of a ramp. It seems to me, though, like when I was out there, you're, you're coming down to it. There's a big tree that's kind of up on a hummocks. So what's that? Is that six inches? Is it six inches above? The, 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 you're coming down the hill on the right? Yeah. And then on the other side, there's definitely a tree that you're running into. It seems like there's roots exposed and something like that. So there's another hummock. So that's that's kind of taking the curse out of it. So if you had 12 inches, you're not really 12 inches. It's going to sink at least two. And then you have these two sides that have come up a bit. You know, you might be down to eight inches um, from, from you know, up and dry on both sides. So it's not going to be, yeah. you know, like this garden type, you know, bridge that, that you might be imagining. But, um. Which might actually help erosion at the limits of that wetland where it starts to join the trail again. You know, <clears throat> because if it's up a little higher, it's going to have to go a little bit longer. Um, you know, you just, to, just to meet the slope. Um, unless you did a ramp up or ramp down. So... Um, any other feedback from anybody else here? Where were you going to preassemble these uh, this, these sections? Ideally, on the house. It, uh, we do have um, at Matera Cabin. The trail committee has been assembling these these things. There's some uh, you know there's power there, and it's uh, it's oh, nice if you want to use that. Yeah. There are probably some leftover material still hanging around. Right there. there are pipes there. There you go. Okay. Okay. We have to approve doing in the pipes. Like, you know, we bought them for some other project. But I don't think Is it left over? It, yeah, I'm not sure what's left over. There's some eight inches, but maybe some, maybe some six we never used. Okay. We have to go back so, that would be <coughs> so we'd like to see this raised up a little bit. Yep. You've worked really hard on this, and sorry to send you back to the drawing board, but. Um, very yeah, I like the plans. Yeah. The plans are nice. I, I very, very much nice like these good plans. Good um, it's it's very easy well to it's easy to understand what you're proposing with these. Do you, so. do you can you just approve uh, this some, with some pipe? Yeah, and, some height, yeah. Yeah, okay. some pipe, and then he, yeah. I, mean, I think like Brandon's uh, six inches. I would approve either six else? six or eight inches, whichever materials are available or whichever he wants but, to but do. But you're leaning towards that traditional. Corrugated. Right. Boardwork that we put in recently. Yeah. So what would the idea be just to like put on additional uh, piping underneath what I have right now? Instead of the four by four. You put the this four by four cor corrugated yeah. pipe. There's the four by fours that would run down there. Right. Just put pipes in there instead. So we only have one four by one layer of four, four by four, four layer framing. And then Pipes we on. have those in a number of places. Uh, you could go look at Kirchian Woods. Kirchian Woods, Kirchian Woods is the easiest yeah. one. Yeah. Have yeah. you seen that? Uh, no, I haven't. Yeah, it would be worth going in there and take a look. They what is the detail? Huh? Does, yeah, does I, we have do have detail. detail. Um, Kim H has the oh, detail. Okay. These guys. Okay. Yeah. We'll yeah. thought, so we're looking I for uh, Mark. Mark Watson. I thought so too. Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking. We're looking at between six and eight inch clearance underneath the, the stringer. Yeah. Perfect, that works. Yeah. 
Okay. So. Okay. So should we? Would, would, would six be all right though? Or? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because we're talking about just sinking a little bit. Yeah, that's what we asked for with fences. Okay. Six inches. Do we want to see totally revised plans, or do we want to just approve this no. with six inches? I, I would well, approve with standard design. Yeah. Okay. Can we have a vote on it? Motion and vote. So this, is, this is under yeah. the existing trails committee permit, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I move that we move through this under the jurisdiction of the previously approved trails uh, committee permit. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Opposed. Good no. job. Thank you. Actually, uh, are there any like additional paperwork or anything I have to do before I guess continuing on? We'd like to call when you're finished. Okay. And uh, maybe you a can call, give us when a call when you start. Yeah, too. starting too. So uh, okay. I know that the trail we have trails committee people, and so they'll be uh, updating us. But you can update us too. Okay, sure. I'm going to show when the trail committee is meeting next. But if you want, to, we'll probably get arranged to go out to the cabin and take a look at what's there. Definitely. Um, get in touch with Tom Gardner, mm -hmm. and then maybe we can, uh, we can get together and take a look at that. Sounds good. Okay. Oh, we have a comment this from the public. doesn't mention the change, but no, I... No, I wanted to ask a question about the agenda. Uh, sure. Please I please wondered not. if the flooding issue on Walnut Street was going to be addressed tonight. Um, no one called me. We had a... It says, according to my agenda, we have a uh, written request to continue the hearing to August 13th. Why? The engineers Why? weren't prepared, I assume. Why aren't they? I don't have that They've reason been going for on you. For five years. No, I hear you. And, and the town engineer was here at the last meeting, and um, th that's that's the information I have for you. I'm sorry, well, I don't have more they information. Done it two weeks, but he didn't do it, did he? I can't speak for him. Okay. Are you sure that's going to be on the 13th? I mean, okay. It's can, scheduled. We can't be sure yeah. if he's sick or. I, th I think the he last time he was here, he came in because he, he, ca he came in, he was on vacation. I think he had just had back surgery or um, there's something going on. Um, so he did, li he did listen to you. I mean, I, he did write it down. I, I you know, I'm not. He probably have it done in two weeks and he didn't do it. Okay. We'll follow up with him. Right before 169 Walnut Street. I'm just getting involved in this novel. It seems unbelievable. This gentleman over here comes to town hall with a plan yesterday, and he gets called on first. This lady and the daughter have been waiting five years. Sir, the sir, rationale? sir, we have an agenda that we publish yeah, every agenda. every week. Yeah, and it's posted at the police station, and it's posted mm -hmm. online. Where do you? And it's, where do you? It's put made the public. I'm there's sorry. actually one right there's, there on the doorway. There's, there's a sign in there that you can no, get an email delivery the of yeah. the agenda. When does it get So we're more than happy to provide that as well at right. the sign in. I'm sorry, sure. when does it go on the web? Because I've looked on the web at times. Would you go ahead. Yeah, go ahead? Go ahead. So um, go ahead. you can go to the town um, website and sign up to uh, get every agenda posted. Okay. That's the first. Secondly, you can call the conservation office the night of the meeting and find out whether it's been continued or not. Okay. But sometimes continuations come in at the last minute for a whole bunch of different reasons. There's nothing I can do about it. Yeah, I, I do not call residents. That's, that's not something but I do. Can't you go on the web and see the agenda? You yeah, can that's see the agenda. And that's, that goes up either Wednesday or Thursday a week before. Last week we had that up. Oh, you did do it last yeah. week. Yeah, but it said that it was going to be an item we would speak about tonight until we found out this afternoon. I mean, I wanted to make sure it was official. Yeah, so I, it's official. Did you get paperwork, or do we just? He sent me an by? email, so okay. it's it's in writing okay. that um, it's wanted. been continued, okay. and we don't have. It, someone can continue some, an, uh, an item until we get tired of the continuations. <laughs> And that's not just one or two times. So we have no control over that. We need to see enough information to make a decision. So it's on the applicant to provide that information. So 
whether it's taken five years or not, and he's continuing another couple of times, we're right. still waiting also. Okay. Right, so well the you, concern you, was the dry season is in August? He's gonna make his dry season, it's probably still wet out there. If he's gonna do this, in and he didn't tell me when he's gonna start doing the, okay. this work, but okay. it, he has August, he has up until We're supposed September to get two inches of rain tonight. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I know. I know. It's been well, at the year. last meeting you said the summer, and now I think he's indicating the fall, but then we're, we're fearing that in the fall there'll be too much rain, and another year will go by. So so let me just understand, you said that if, if they do it more, then you can say no more? So what we, the way the order would be written is to give him approximate dates to do the work. Now, if we took an additional step saying do not do that if rain is forecast, within the next couple of days, that would stop the project. Okay. But we don't usually do that here. Right. So just saying, just do it between like August and September 15th would be great okay. you know, for you guys. Then right. you would have yeah. some time. In, in right. this, this committee cannot make people do things. We can just allow them to do things they want under with certain okay. constraints. But we, we cannot, uh, unless they okay. violate the law, we can't force them to do anything. So I think if they keep postponing it, you can say, you, can you just vote on the first one? But if, if, if we, the only thing we can do, if they keep postponing it, we get tired of it and we can, we can deny it because we didn't get enough information. But that's not going to help you get your project done. No, right. So, I, don't know. I mean, this is, this is a town project. And from what I hear, it's, he's, in all seriousness, there, there was, you know, maybe his uh, the, back. his back or something. He just couldn't get this going. But it's believe me, it's on the top of his list. Okay, I ran great. into him in okay. the Thank parking you. lot two days ago, and he's, he said, "I'm I'm going to get that Don't to you." Have a competent assistant to complete the project. This is actually an excellent job. Yeah, this 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 team Robin of engineers Chris. here in Reading is a, a really good team. And if they didn't put this thing together, believe me, they were okay. just, so just underwater. Okay, so if you guys say it's postponed three or four more times, what's... We, we wouldn't postpone it. I doubt that would happen. Once he shows yeah, up, we're right. ready to go. Oh, yeah. I know, but if he postpones two or three. You know, the best thing that a Butters can do is just keep calling him. Okay. Just keep okay. calling him. He doesn't want those phone calls, believe me. <laughs> All right? He'll be at the next meeting. Yeah. That's it. And, and okay. he didn't say he wasn't going to be at the next meeting. I believe, I really believe he'll be here okay. at the next meeting. Okay. Very good. And I Thank think they were going to do it with town employees, so he didn't have to put it out to bid or anything once he's done. So right. it should right. move quickly. Right. Okay. Very good. Thank you yeah. for your time. Okay. So, Thank uh, you. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry yeah. for the interruption, um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I totally forgot. There is. I signed the letter. Interruption. We've been waiting five years. No, I thank you for your input. We're yeah, just right. moving on. Um, so the letter's all set. I have a letter. Um, yeah, and you signed signed it. Yep. So I'm gonna. So. I'll send you a copy of this. I need to take a copy myself, and this is what you can put in your documents. Um, so you should, be, you should be all set with that change of six inches of space underneath. That's the only thing that came up. Okay. Right, any other questions? Uh, no. Any That's any it. more questions from the public about this project? No. Okay. <laughs> he knows all about it. <laughs> okay. I think he much. does. Thank you. So you got a little civic, right, civics lesson yeah, also. You. That's good. Yeah. 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 You saw yeah. democracy at work. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Can I can I just ask? <laughs> Which particular hearing are you? Are you tree removal request? Glenmere. I'm sorry? Glenmere, sir, a tree removal request. Oh, okay. It's um, a minor project. Um, why, don't we, why don't we get to that? We're just going to yeah. skip for a second since he's here. Um, so Glenmere, uh, 72 Glenmere Circle. Um, Terry, you did the site visit? I did the site visit, but I did not go on the street. I didn't bring the right table with me. I was just looking at the trees and didn't you know, realize later that how far is that? Oh yeah. Okay. Um, because the stream that's on. So here, I'll pull up my paperwork on this one. So just for the record, would, if you would just introduce yourself so that Kim can get get this done. Um,
Okay, thanks for coming in. Um, you had a minor permit uh, application. There's a tree. There's a tree that's pretty far gone instead. Um, the bark's falling off it. It's in between three healthy trees, approximately 40 feet from the deck. Um, and my question, so there's on the land, the schematic that you drew, you had a bridge over a small stream. Um, when I went out there, it, it wasn't something that the Conservation Commission would categorize as a stream. It was more a, a low-lying grass. It was dry when I walked. That's way up. Oh, it was a micro swale. It was, you know, yeah, it was like right. this wide and that deep. And but dry, so. <coughs> but and dry. It's dry 80%. Um, it's only after a rain, a rainstorm that it has any sort of... It's got a lovely little bridge over it, which I, I presume is, you know, a nice ornamental addition. And, um, sure. And then um, from that small stream back towards uh, probably a perennial stream um, back there, um, I, I, I would have guessed it would, would, would have been 50 feet or more. Have you been out in that area? Yep. But I didn't measure. So we, have you seen the stream? That's yep. That's what you're talking about. Do you, do, do you know the distance? I, I didn't walk it up. I would say anywhere from... 40 feet or so. Is, is there flow in that stream all year long? Uh, kind of. Like, it's, it's very, very, very light. Like, it's mostly standing water. Yeah, I, I would doubt if it's a river. It's definitely well, not a river. Well, the, uh, oh, yeah, but there's a, there's a property a couple of houses down that we have been in their backyard because they have built out into their backyard and it's sort of the bend of this river. But did we classify it as riverfront at that time? I don't know if it they're was really, riverfront really or whether it was you know, land underwater it. or... There are really only three rivers in town, or maybe... Or 23 streams. I don't think we yeah. classified that. I mean, that was one of the first ones that I was on. And I think Bill had a lot to say about it. And it, believe me, I don't think it was a river. I mean, a river, we wouldn't have given in the determination we did. Right. We allowed it to cut down like 14 trees or something right. like that, or 10. I'd be very surprised. So that, so that doesn't be, happen with a riverfront. So, But it would be wetland and land and yeah. water. And sure, bank absolutely, and, I mean, absolutely. Um, so, All that. Um, so the tree, so basically every, uh, the vet, it's, it's forest essentially from that small streamline back to this stream or rivulet or I'm not sure what we're going to call it. Um, and you'd like to take down this tree. Is um, How is that tree going to be? Do you propose to take the tree down? Uh, well, it's really an expense thing on my end. You know, I, I'm trying to do it as, as cost effective as possible. Right? But, but mechanically, oh. Where, oh, uh, what, uh, what, where does the equipment go and where does... I would have to ask the tree removal company about how they do it. I, I you, have you chosen a removal yes, company? Yes, no, Northeast Tree. Well, yeah, Northeast, Northeast tree. has a big crane, so that okay. is a possibility, but that might add to it. But, you know, you're asking so many questions about the wetland and, and that area. I was, are you thinking of just dropping it backwards and leaving it for habitat? Um. I, I'm, I not, think I'm not sure. Was, I didn't know what you were getting no, at, I but that would save money for sure. I, I, I think my, I, I my think hope is to do just that. Just cut it, drop it. Because there's all these trees in a half circle in front of it. But I didn't see anything in back that would block. Uh, no. Yeah, they had some really good ones to drop it. guys on Northeast. It's fine, I would think, as long as it's safe. It's fine yeah. with me. Yeah. Uh, no, you mean have drop it and leave it? Yeah. 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 Cut it into sections, maybe? If he's willing to drop it and leave it, that's the best solution. Okay. Squirrel condo. Absolutely. <laughs> that's what happens in the woods when they fall. Yep. They just stay. Yep. <laughs> to make any noise. <laughs> really way way. <laughs> also, no, um, seriously. No, that's we exactly had, what happens. We had we had a we had a previous um, conservation member who who was a big fan of leaving um, a stand of like eight to ten feet because woodpeckers and other mm -hmm. creatures like to make that into a habitat. Okay. Um, yeah, if you, you know, want to so do that, you drop it at eight feet and drop the rest down. Into the yeah, if that's good with you, I'm just then. trying to protect my house. That's yeah. Oh, yeah. absolutely. That yeah. would do it. Yeah. 
That'll do it. Okay. Yeah. Feet, drop it backwards and be down. Easiest way to do that. And probably be the cheapest. Probably be cheaper. <laughs> yeah. Probably be cheaper. Yeah. Love it. Yep, they can just do the work on it. Yeah, so just make sure that that whatever they leave is not gonna. <laughs> right. Well, you also have fall, fall and be, become a problem. You don't want to do a job twice for sure. Uh, no, thank you. So, um, yeah, Northeast has some the very experienced tree climbers and cutters, and uh, if if he says it can be done, then yeah, I trust him. Yeah. Yep. It can yep. be done. So you can't take the roots out, whether he cuts it flush or leaves the eight foot stand. No, so it wasn't even something I was thinking about. All right, great. So it sounds like yep. we have uh, leaving eight feet, we dropping the rest as habitat, closure, cut it into a few pieces. Great. So great. If you're good with that, then uh, should we just do a procedural vote on it? Yeah, is this on. a minor yeah. project? Yes, it, it is yes. a minor. So. Um, I, so I'll they usually get a, a letter yep. saying that it's approved, and I can just say those things on that letter. Okay. We could either approve it, or we could authorize Chuck to uh, to do it. We have well, both I had a chainsaw, options. but... Um, do it. No, I don't mean to cut it. I mean to, to issue, issue the letter on his own. We, we could relieve ourselves of responsibility in terms of Chuck, or we could approve it. And the purpose of my, one of the purposes of a minor project, not only to be easier to the applicant, is to be easier to commissioners so they don't have to spend as so much time. Yeah. On it. It's like oh. one half dozen of the other to me. I don't know. I move we uh, authorize Chuck to approve this as he sees fit. All right. All second. All those in favor? Okay. So okay, I'll send I'll send the letter, okay. but you can go ahead and call those guys tomorrow. Just tell them what we talked about, and um, if he has any questions, you can call me at work. All right. Great. And I'll send I'll send okay. out the letter tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Okay. Since it's past uh, seven ten, why don't we um, get to thirty seven James Road? So do I need to, to read thirty seven? Sorry, thirty seven James Road. Did, they, did, did we already continue? finish with that? No, thirty seven James Road, Fukarelli. Property? We, we approved it last two weeks ago. I'm pretty sure. Here is I wasn't at the meeting, but it did we, say that you voted. You didn't vote to close. We didn't vote to close right. because we, you were so here to write the order of conditions. So but we Rick ordered to issue a can't order make it, of conditions. Right. So Rick O'Connor can't make it tonight. And so I told him we will send him. I need to send the commission oh, the order of conditions for your comment. Right. And then I will send it to him. And we'll be ready at the next meeting, and this is. But you've seen his new drawing, right? I I have, uh, yeah, I had it on my. He's. Um, he's yeah, with thirty-five foot, everything 30 is fine. 40. Yeah, it's, I I get it. But we did get, and I don't know if you saw this email. We did get a response from town council about. It's the irrelevant now, though. NDA. It's not an it's, issue. How's that? Because we approved the application. Did we? Yes. So we voted on it, right? Yes, we voted on it. In fact, we have the minutes right here. <laughs> Let me double check for a minute. It's on the second page. Clap. So I can tell you what Rick told me. He said you didn't close it. and so We didn't close the hearing. We didn't close the hearing. Yeah, so he yeah, was, We continued the public hearing. hearing. Yeah. yeah. So he, so we didn't close he was it. under the impression that... Um, you know, you left it open for to discuss what town council said. Right. And he would want he would want that if there was a, a lawyer here that wanted to see that. Well, we left it open because we didn't want to start the twenty one day clock since you weren't around. But That's also, the only reason we totally left it open. That, yeah. But uh, but also because we hadn't received comments back from the town council. Mm -hmm. yeah, that I, was I that tell, was another reason it that just was it is isn't an issue anymore because we're not denying the permit or asking him to do anything he didn't right. offer to do. Right. But I do think some of the accommodations we are making in that permit um, are to <coughs> accommodate for what, his what accommodations are we making? A flat a relatively flat backyard. I know, but he's um, outside the thirty five foot But he's still in the jurisdictional area. And we're allowing <coughs> a whole heap of fill in there. Um, and and then there's compensation for the tree cutting. Question about the fill. Right. I, I'm 
remember Brian, I don't know if it was at a meeting or just talking, he, he was just telling me if you fill at eight inches or 10 feet, it's, it's the same. What is it, you prove fill. It's the same. Yeah. It's the same effect. <coughs> so I, I, that came, I don't know if that came up in a meeting, but. And I, I, and I can't tell you the site is filled now. Historic fill. Yeah. It's historic fill. Which site? This site, the fruit really site. Because the soil maps say that it's historic fill, and they didn't even bring it up. Hmm. I mean, literally, the soil map says that entire neighborhood is historic fill. Because they had to bring in fill. To yeah, but that doesn't, that doesn't allow them to was fill it more. a spoil site for right. Right. the highway construction. Right. And the entire site there, the entire neighborhood is historic fill, according to the soil map. I mean, just to put it in 95? Well, they, yeah, they, they, yeah. They, they move a lot of soil around, so a lot of times they have spoil areas that, yeah. you know, they level it out, and the next thing you know, someone's building a house. Oh. There, there was one over there behind the old REI. Oh. Now, I did read the, the, the findings. You did? Yes, and the summary of the findings are, for future, is that they do apply as long as they do. Uh, we need to make accommodations with our regulations. Um, as long as it doesn't fundamentally change the nature of the program or the nature of the regulations. That's what you two got out of that ADA stuff? Pretty much. And, and so what, and it, but it kept mentioning dwelling. So it, it does. So for instance, the parking lot example, uh, the parking spot example. Mm -hmm. Let's say he wanted to park a car in the back and that was the closest to the entrance that he was gonna use with the wheelchair. And we said, you can't put it there. It's within the 35 foot. Right. This is all fictional. I'm making all this up. Right. You can't right. put it there. It's within the 35 that foot. We might, don't let anybody do that. That right. might be in violation. That might be in violation. But. I think this is more of a gray area, a yard. Uh, I wouldn't even area. say gray because even if you listen to town council or in all those words, if you unreasonably restrict him from use of his property. Mm. So if that was the only yard he had. Right. And we said you can't level right. it we would be unreasonably restricting him from use of yard. his property. But he has a very large front yard mm -hmm. and we're not restricting the use of his property by preventing that fill. Right, so I, I, right. I, I understand, I agree with that and I also agree with as we get further away from the house and closer to the wetland, that's, that's where we're allowed to you know, really start bargaining at that point. Right. And we got what we wanted, I think. Exactly, I think that the 35 foot is consistent with, I mean, if Everything this came in, like um, right. you know, maybe a few more trees would have been, you know, plus or minus sure. trees, Yeah. but the 35 foot seems to be very consistent, and I would have had a bunch of questions about, you know, that much fill, because I never saw it before, but, you know, the commission feels like that, that's fine, so. And I don't it's, know. it's funny, they, he, it's never been, this has never been taken to court, No. a local bylaw. But and it's funny how he backs into the, uh, how he says, zoning laws have been taken to court with, with the FHAA mm -hmm. as well as the ADA Act. And they're, like he said here, they're interpreted um, together. Yeah. Because they're, they're so, you know, similar. they're so similar. So it's funny how he backs into it. He says, so it's, it's logical to believe that any sort of bylaw by another commission would also fall under these rules. And, I, and, I, and I, he didn't mention this, he or she didn't mention this state wetland law at all. Mm. Right. So if we had to right. deal with this, we'd have to go back and ask that question. Because local bylaws are very different from state, right. from state yeah. laws. Right. But anyway, luckily Trans we don't have to deal with it. Case law I think that's right. Some of the case law I fed, cited was from uh, New York, Babylon, New York. And, you know, well, it's a federal, yeah. the ADA, of course, yeah. it's a federal. Yeah. federal case law. Yeah. So. But I think your example of if he needed to bring his car in to park it to get up a ramp and it was in 35 feet, I think we probably have to grant it. We would have to. Yeah, we might so. and we might require significant mitigation, but I think we probably have to grant it. But this is not that case. Right. Right. And and, and I didn't even think of the, the, the front yard. Yeah. You know, there is a usable front yard. Absolutely. A lot bigger than my front yard. Anyway, probably quieter too. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Every <laughs> once in a while. Well, he's he has yeah. a great a bunch, a bunch of wild kids <laughs> across the street. <laughs> 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 yeah, watch out there. 
learning to throw. <laughs> throwing baseballs and yep. soccer balls now. Yep. Right? Yep, but exactly. now I was thinking about every once in a while the alarms go off. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But um, yeah, it might be a good idea not to, um, to you know, keep the discussion. So, um, I so will, I, uh, the thing, the thing about this issue, if if um, if ADA wasn't wasn't uh, a consideration here, you know, and going back to the timeline, you know, just the the degradation of the forest habitat. You know, we lost some forest habitat in this project. You know, and um, and every time, and we, and we lost forest habitat uh, with the, the building of um, what was that road off of Forest Ave? It was um, where the four houses were put within thirty-five feet of. Oh, the uh, Kylie Drive is that you think? Not Kylie, Kylie Drive, but um, more yeah. recent. Yeah, yeah, Bethune. Oh, yeah. Bethune. You know, um, you know. We lost some real old growth trees there. Yeah. I mean, we're getting, um, you know, with development, it's it's inevitable that the town's kind of getting deforested. It's a pile um, of paper cuts. <laughs> One little nibble after another. Yeah. You know, and, right. um, and with the forest goes habitat, because it, it just has to. So um, I think, I think, it's part of this commission's responsibility to stem that. I don't see any other entity in the town that has the authority and the say to to try and combat that a little bit. And I think with this project, you know, Mr. Frucarelli, I hope I'm not butchering his name. Sorry if I am. But, you know, if he has PTSD and needs the open spaces, well then, you know, he can't have a backyard full of trees. Right. You know, so that's an ADA that is, that uh, is accommodation. An ADA. It is. Um, well, and the flat backyard is a bit of an ADA accommodation, too, because of the open space <coughs> concept and also flat because he literally cannot, you know, he needs something with a flat <coughs> grade. But have they um, agreed to replace more bushes and trees that are Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, they took out 18 trees and they, they are replacing with 12 bushes. Oh. 12 bushes He's and... Some trees between him and his neighbors. Too. Right, but that's almost outside. outside of the 100 foot. But and and Nico, we that, and, then, and then between those bushes and the, and the forest, there's going to be wildflowers on the side of the slope. You know, so, until the grass takes off. So, so there, will be, there will be native habitat kind of reestablished along that slope. And that's, that to me is some compensation for... What he cut down. For what he cut down in the taking of those trees. So, so all in all, I'm hoping that the habitat is improved um, in that vicinity. And I think, you know, and then if we have a resident who's on board with protecting the habitat as well, then that's a bonus because we've got a lifelong, you know. Um, I think, uh, you know, we could have had a, a, a nature lover in this guy, and he could have requested a boardwalk down to the pond and around the pond and access that way. Um, in, in a discussion with me, he said he was a nature lover. Yeah, so that yeah. might, that might so come up. So he might still do it. Because you could skate on that pond, and that would be great because it's all yeah. about, you know, getting, yeah. you can't enjoy nature if you can't be in it. I, so. I mean, so we, we would have a very, very difficult time, and it would be against precedent and probably wouldn't be upheld under the Ten Bylaws or the State Wildlife Protection Act if we severely limited clearing of vegetation outside of the 35-foot zone. Well, it's just something to think about. You know, um, with, you know, th these trees in town are gonna go through that um, cycle of getting diseased and, and, uh, and getting struck by lightning and, and uh, you know, and being overrun by invasive trees and stuff like that. But I think, you know, um, I think part of the character of the town is that it's got a lot of old growth trees. Um, and I think that's part of the reason why a lot of people move here. And I don't disagree with you at all, but uh, we don't but have the jurisdiction to prevent you from cutting down trees you know, 35 feet, unless there's a very specific reason to do it. Because we have allowed, I mean, look at all the development, like oh, Johnson yeah. Wood and 
Arch yeah. stone, I mean, all the trees mm -hmm. that's out there are gone. We have said to them, keep this tree. See that's how right. many you it's can. Very and we, we've tried. We yeah. have, you know, you we like haven't said. You like Lexington. <laughs> I like Reading. You can't, you can't <laughs> cut down trees in your front setback without replacing them. Per caliber diameter. Oh, yeah. Because that's a 24 inch diameter tree, you got to replace it with See? Well, that's what Lexington 12 wants 2 inch to trees. You can have a tree that replacement that policy. That's a town bylaw. They that's are serious a, about their trees. Right. So, and, and our bylaw, just, our wetland bylaw is about two and a half pages. It's very non specific. Yeah. Oh, I just. Easy. I just think, um, you know, the more projects that come before us, and I see, you know, lots of lots of trees, perhaps necessarily, perhaps unnecessarily cut. You know, I just sort of think, well, there goes there goes the buffer for that forested area behind that property. Mm -hmm. You know, that's gone now, and it's going to take decades before it's back. So anyway, so so moving on with this project. So we'll have a draft. Next week. Next Hopefully. week, mm -hmm. and um, we, and we'll is, review it. And yeah, we're gonna the next meeting. We yeah. are going to, you know, we should be done with yeah. all the and back and forth, and right. it will be signed. And either you or Ann can print out that Jean email from town council and just add it to the file. Yeah, because the, I think that kind of needs to be a finding. Because I, I would like to put. We're gonna combine the disability with some of the finding and talk about yeah. trees um, and how we're allowing it because of that. That's right. Um, okay. We're added to it. But you'll all have a chance to review whatever. Okay. Add to it. So. so is there another motion to continue to the next meeting? Do we have to do that's that? Particular particular or? I would definitely make that motion, yeah. I well, mean, for somebody let's, should. Let's but I have a hard time doing it tonight. Because we don't have a order of conditions. conditions. Yeah. yeah. But it wasn't so between anybody out there. Oh, okay. So, okay. Plus, so, the hearing didn't close. Right. Oh, but he was. I even. I even emailed um, Rick tonight and said that we wouldn't even be discussing a draft order of conditions. It will be. It will be emailed to him. He said thanks. Fine. Oh, good. He couldn't okay. be here. Great. Okay. No? Great. Okay. So I'll make a motion to continue a notice of intent two seventy dash oh six two nine to the next meeting, which is yes. August. Uh, 13th. 13th? 13th, yeah. August 13th. Oh, we meet the second and the fourth, so. Hey, that is the second, yeah. It's a so we get three weeks off. You do. <laughs> yes. You can stay in Lawrence an extra night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so motion to continue. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Okay. Okay. Um, we don't have to discuss Walnut Street because that's continued. Okay, um, the enforcement order then for uh, five Johnson Circle. You heard from the contractor? Sure, I called the contractor. Sure. Um, and uh, yeah, sure, I'm ready to talk about it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, I figured I, you would. You know, yeah. I, I called the contractor and um, left a message with his service. This is the tree guy. This is the tree yeah. guy. Yeah. And I requested uh, that he come to the meeting tonight. And uh -huh. uh, he knew that because we discussed it on site. And he said, uh, there's been so many storms and trees that are, are down that um, this would really cut into his business. And he would he requests that he, you know, makes a firm commitment to come to the meeting on the 13th. And I agreed that that's fine. And in, in, most of the reason why I agreed is because it wasn't five minutes before he came back to me, you know, called me right back yeah. from that, you know, from his uh, answering service. Mm -hmm. So okay. it sounded mm -hmm. like... Yeah, this is the one where um, you and I went to Nika and he had... One tree just, aren't we finished with that? Why does he have to come in? Um, because he was issued an enforcement order. And the reason and why. And asked he, to come. And asked to come. Right. Yeah. What so, are we going to do? So we, what we want to do is we want to start issuing enforcement orders to not only the, the owner, but the contractor too. And then requiring the contractor because he's shown the fact that he doesn't know what a wetland is, or he has some rule of thumbs that he's picked up at you know Tree Academy that don't really work out for conservation. To make him understand that when I recognize a um, when I see that there's wetlands within a certain amount, the owner needs to know because they all go out for that estimate, and that they don't cut the same day they go out to check it out. And if any of these contractors said 
look, call the Conservation Commission, make sure this is okay, and do whatever you got to do, and I'll be back in two weeks. That's all we need. These guys see five or six people in town every year, maybe every month. The owner only deals with this property. It's a one-time right. event. We're but, not but making what, any headway, just giving enforcement orders what, to the owners. What are we going to do, though? I would like to, I know that there's a course online for, um, for the very basic wetlands um, delineation at MACC. I think it's like $35. Request that he takes that course online. Request or force him to force do it? Force him to do it. And then have him print out. Well, we have a, you know, there's a fining thing too. I mean, it's, yeah. You could request it. I mean, how are we, how are we going to get over the hump? This is what I'm saying. If, if this guy leaves this town with his rule of thumb, and I'll tell you verbatim what he said, if a tree is within striking distance of the house, now he didn't tell me how many feet that is, he has the right to take it down. So that's going to eliminate every tree on uh, Azalea Circle that you wanted to protect in the 35-foot area. That, first of all, that's not true. What I just said about what he told me about the 35 no, I mean, I'm, sure, I'm sure it's true that he told you that, but what he no, said. No, no, no. Right. Right. No, yeah. exactly. Right. So right. this but is that's, what, that's <coughs> what we're trying to. That's exactly the point. How, how are we going to check to see if he took that course? You get to print out a certificate. Then he can mail me a copy. Does he have to pass a test on it? No, he just basically. He's got to read these students. Yeah. Or take any course he wants to, or or pick up a book and read it, or or something. I think I but to leave, you know, to leave town and say, "Hey, not my problem." Talk to the owner. You know, this is like a reoccurring thing. Not, not with this person. Uh, I'm right. just saying with with companies that come in, well companies, tree companies, maybe a driveway company for an enlargement or a turnaround area that you know, one day jobs, things like that. Are we going to apply this uh, same approach to well drillers, pavers? Well drillers, Framers. well drillers have to get permits, so Sorry. within our jurisdiction Sorry. they yeah. usually either do a minor project permit or an RDA. So if they do it without that, it's a violation and we would do the same thing. Why not? It's what do they do in other jurisdictions? I know you're familiar with two other jurisdictions. <laughs> what do they do in those jurisdictions? And, and, the, and one of the jurisdictions I work in, it's pretty much pavement throughout the city or town. Um, so. We don't really have a lot of these things happening. Oh, right, 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 right. But, um, yeah, there's always, there's always the contractor comes in. They're, they're almost more responsible because do they, they the have the opportunity to tell people. Do they cite the contractor every time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the policy there. This is how it is. That's what we do. Yeah. That's, yeah. Got a tree down in the wetland area? The, yeah, no. Not a fine. No. You're coming to a meeting, you're telling us what, why you did it, what your thoughts are on it, and then that discovery process says, wow, we have somebody here who just doesn't get it. And uh, you know, then the, the commission can make any decision they want, and as long as they have you know, uh, a quiver full of options, they can you know, choose for themselves what it is. How about landscape com landscaping companies that blow the leaves into the weather? I don't know. What, how about a farmer? Or yeah. the what about a farmer that plows the furrow down the hill instead of up the hill? I don't know. There's yeah. There's there's definitely all these things. No, I, I mean under our system of government, the landowner is the responsible party. Ultimately, that landowner is the responsible. So party. so leaves spread out in the way. I mean, they're they're in every house in Reading has a pile in the yet you have a compost area. You know, from the town, there's there's a pile of leaves. Most every house, not every single house. So you can go to any house and find that. Are you going to fi find them? I I don't know. But that's the homeowner. You know? No, right, the homeowners. But I, I'm having a lot of difficulty dealing with taking enforcement action against a uh, a vendor. Well, I think it's the vendors. Uh, it's the vendors who are going to be the repeat offenders. <laughs> So trying to it's think of it as like a I mean, we've got malpractice loss. And some no, too. Because like a Gal, uh, Gal, Gavin Circle, guy made him sign a release. He knew. Yeah. He right. knew. Which kind of brings right. me back around to Hensey Street. 
when I was over there, and there there were leaves dumped by a neighbor's what, landscaper into into the conservation land, and those. I think it just comes down to you want to you know, stop it. We I need mean, to do something. Nothing's perfect, but by doing nothing, nothing's going to happen. Well, okay, yeah. it's about just going to be status quo. Well, she did. Yeah. I think I think you hit the nail on the head when he called you back and he said, "Oh, I really can't come in. You know, cut really into my my." Uh, uh, he sounded genuine, you know. you know. But no, but I'm saying you hit the nail on the head. Just having to come in for a meeting, Sit, in yeah. and of itself, is. They're going to take time out of their schedule. I know yep. he, he's from this particular guy is from New Hampshire, yep. so he's going to be far further away from home than some, some of the other guys that work in town, but still, you know. More time to come in and out and then, then go. So even just that process yeah. might, get the, might get him to think, well, hey, wait a minute, maybe I better check on this. Right. I, I, the property owner should know if they're wetlands on or adjacent to this property. No, let's, let's take one step backwards. We're already trying to develop a trifold um, document to send to every real estate person because they're not telling the owners that buy these houses. Right. So, so no one knows. So we've proved it not only this time when we're cutting trees down, but we've also identified it when they're buying the house. So not everyone does. Well, in Johnson Circle, he knew that was a weapon because he had to get the permit before. He knew it was a weapon. But the guy at 152 Walnut that I went to had no idea there was a wetland in his backyard. Right, but yeah. he, he should. Well, I, I, and he does I now. I climbed over the wall and I said, he has yeah. this, this piece here, but he had no idea. He says, why, why are you concerned about this? And I said, well, it's a wetland. He had no idea. And he's owned the house for about four months. So no one told him anything. Well, and, and to your point about the real estate agents, I was speaking to a real estate agent who's been active in this town for 20 plus years, 25 plus years. And she said, it's not the, the full responsibility of discovery is on the buyer. Yeah. Was that that is the seller's. Yeah. Which means the realtor for yeah, the buyer that, that's, the obligation there. So the, so the, so the buyer's, you know, the, the, that that's how it's written. But the realtor has to disclose anything they know about the property. But, but they don't bother finding out knowing. Right. Right, right. There's, there's a lot of blind You can attest for lead if you Some tree have, like, companies no. call all the time, and some of them you never hear from, but you see their trucks everywhere. So yeah. it's, you know. I think something has to be done so that word gets out that that we're not going to sit idly by. You know, it's, it's, it's up to you what the next happen. step is, but to have them come to a meeting and to interrupt their day and to say, that, like, you know, if we get caught, what, what does happen? I think one I thing we talked about when you were in here was, is there a license required in the state of Massachusetts to perform tree services? We should find that out and find out if there's a list of licensed um, just arborists. Arborists. Yeah. And, and if they are, then we should send them a mail. And if, if they need a license, what do they need to get the license? Right, exactly. Good point. But we, we, can you find that out, Chuck? You can that probably was, that just was something. Us. That was something at the last meeting we talked about um, passing off to Ian. To who? To Ian. Oh. For her to do. So you want a so list that, of so arborists? No, well, just yeah, find out if, if a license is required, and if so, if there's a list online or somewhere accessible. It's not. You don't need a license to do this. You need, you need I'm just going to say, you just need um, insurance. Yeah, you need insurance. You're, you're sure you don't need a license? Well, how, could it, how is this operation any different than somebody putting up a placard and saying they're a carpenter? You, you need a license to work in someone's house. I get that for a carpenter, but to start that business, well, I, I don't. I don't know the answer. That's yeah. why I like you keep finding. I'll find out. Great. I'm sure. I'm sure there's a professional certification. It might be like, like the uh, like professional wetland scientist certification is through. It's a national organization. Or, or OSHA might even require. Because that's actually one of the most dangerous professions there is. And that's exactly that's another reason. See, if we had this gentleman here tonight, we'd have these answers. So that's another reason why I should. In, in, Give them an enforcement order. But I don't think I don't think a, a direct letter, a very short and to the point letter, nothing threatening or anything to the local, the companies that we know do business locally, would hurt. Especially if we're going to institute 
uh, right. enforcement orders. Right. And say, this is what we're to, doing now. Yeah. So you better think before you cut. Yeah. I, I, I like, I, I like combining the two, a letter and having this new policy. If this is our new policy. We've had too many of these things going on. Yeah. Call before you cut. That's right. How's that? Oh, that's a ring to Call before you cut. Yeah. Call before you that's cut. That's going to be model. Tree City. Call before you dig. Call before as, you cut. It is. Yeah. As, What's uh, that? What date is that? As Jamie, years ago? Jamie points all the time. Tree City right there. <laughs> so any more discussion about, <laughs> about this, Click it about this violation? <laughs> I'm not convinced yet that I would vote for enforcement action against any any tree cutter without prior notification. Without That's prior what I'm notification? That's what I'm saying. Without what kind of prior Where notification? Where we notify all the people that go out that this is what's going to happen. Maybe the first one's a warning. Next one is a Well, we can't. Um, well, I think. How do we know who's going to work in the town? We can definitely get the people in town. There might only I mean, be we, five. We know there are certain companies that work in town. Right. So what about this guy who's from New Hampshire? I wouldn't have sent him. Well, right. Well, the that's resident why we was could, telling me. That's why we could send a letter to everybody licensed to, to do that. If their license is required, everybody's licensed to do that work in Commonwealth of Massachusetts. The resident told me that this guy that moved his business that he used to operate solely out of Wakefield. So he's only, you know, that he worked out of Wakefield for like 15, 20 years or something like that. So he may be in New Hampshire now, but he was local. All right, so you're, you're agreeing to this new policy after I send this letter out. Well, I'd like to, uh, we should have a written policy. But yeah, let's, get a, let's have a written policy, because I'd like to do this, because I actually yeah. see, you know, I see this as a way to, to stop. And, and we should do it to the landscapers, too, but let's start with the tree guys. Yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. see it work in, in other communities. This is what they do in other communities. Now, there's a combination of thing, why things don't work, work in this other community that I work in. I mean, it's, it's, it's just this strong hand by the Conservation Commission is backed up by every member and the Conservation Office. There's no quivering around with anything. It's and everyone is out of the same mind. <laughs> it's, you know, you've yep. done something against the wall. And you, you, are, you are four or five meetings. Yeah. You, guys, you guys get a reputation, that's for sure. Yeah. 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 Best town, not, do not ask for forgiveness after you've done something in this town. And everybody knows it. It's Boxford. Yeah, they yeah. know it too. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and the thing about that that works is that actually it sounds like we're really tough on people, but no one actually comes in looking for a problem. That's what it actually turns into. Because they know the rules. Well, they're afraid of what might happen. I mean, it's, they never, you know, so, so every, and you do something like that, you're going to be asked for an engineer drawing right away, topo, wetland scientist. What, what is big that? Big bucks, big bucks there. Don't even talk to us. Fines. You know, yeah. we're, you're not selling your house. You're not, you know, I mean, they're not going to issue a certificate of compliance. When those certificates come in for, for from three decades ago, they require an yeah, engineer drawing. They require... Someone to go out there and kind of reconstruct the project. That's and sign off on it. And sign off on it. Yep. That's that might be way too much. They're a different town. That might right. be way too much right. for here. But that's well, certain things do work here. Certainly. And I just think that we have had a rash of problems. And I'm not saying this is the correct solution, but it doesn't work to not try something. something. We can always stop doing it. Or the commission can say, you know, I'm not seeing results here. Yeah. Let's let's stop, or I'm not going to have them do this MACC, you know, online training, whatever, yeah. or whatever else there might be. I mean, I I, I agree. I, I know that lots of things from Boxer Boxer in a different community, it's things don't don't translate. Some no, things won't translate. It's a well over, town. But some might. But they're, some might. They're well town. A lot of people are worried about their well water, so they right. put up with all this stuff. Right. They exactly. expect protection exactly. for that. So I mean there's so many different variables, but I think that like you said, you can't you can't you can't just keep having it happening. Oh, it happened again. Oh, it happened again. There's gotta be a way to, to at least educate without causing too much pain. Yeah. And and that and and that could also be the third the, you know, the third uh, thing you could do would be a tree policy with if you're taking them down, you know, you have to do 
in kind replacement or by caliper or something like that. You you could come up with something, and then and then you don't have to feel I don't know awkward at a commission meeting mm -hmm. and say, look, I want a bunch of trees. Well, it's written down. Yeah, I don't have to. This, this I'm is just policy. telling you the rules. Yeah, but and en engineers have said. They, they like our regulations because what they need to do is written on paper. We, you know, we don't go into these other towns and they say, oh, what's the setback? Oh, well, it might be 50 feet, it might be 30 feet, it might be 25 feet. When, it, when it's a policy, that's where they start. That's where they go always. Yeah, so our in, tax, in, in, in our regulations, is more than policy. This, this right. latest right. situation on 37 James Road, it, you know, we never asked who cut the trees down, how that happened, but you know that guy's out there thinking, you know, I got the government behind my back. Right. I can just do this again and get paid. You know, great. Right. That's that's all there is to it. I, it. It works. Okay. What do you say? Okay. Next. Next on the agenda, uh, certificate of compliance for uh, twenty six Harrison Street. Yeah, it's not really a certificate. So we just have to close out. We the have to order. close it out. <coughs> so. Um, so I move we uh, close oh, out. We just need a motion, right? Mm -hmm. So I move we close out uh, the previous uh, order of conditions. And where was that? Did he ask yeah. us to do this? This was a whole procedural situation he, where. He was told that this is what's going to happen. Yeah. He has to refile again. He has to refile. No yeah, question. Yeah, he does have to refile. But, I mean, there are many orders out there that we've issued that people never did the thing. Right. So and we don't we, go back, go right, back and close guys. them out. But he wants well, to. He, he wants to refile. He tried to resurrect this and he, he didn't. Wants, he wants to refile the same permit. Yeah. So, in order to do that, he's got to close the previous one out. I don't think that's true. Where, where does it, it say is. he has to close to that? <laughs> it says it right here. Yeah, it, is. The paper. it is. It is. It is. That's why there's that, that option Check to box. invalid yeah. order of conditions because no work was done. AP. Right. So, you know, DEP tracks these right. things and so does the commission. So it, it needs a closeout. Okay, so I move we close out the previous order of conditions. Uh, second. Okay, you seconded it. All those in favor of closing out the previous order of conditions for 26 Harrison Street in Reading. Robert and Elizabeth Malinsky. I don't know if my colleague is prepared for a vote. I'm still reading this. Okay. I'm still looking for my copy of that. <laughs> Maybe I took it. Maybe you did. I might have. What? Um, they had an order of conditions from years ago that expired. Yeah. They, they never did, did the work. work. They never did any of the work. They wanted to reactivate it because now they have money again. Right, they can resubmit what they had before. But so, is there a form we have to submit? Yeah. We have to that's close the, that's it. it. This that's is the it. Form. Oh, this is the form. Okay. This is All eight. those in favor of closing out the previous order of conditions. All right. You got it ready? I do. So, you know these things get recorded, right? So if he doesn't have Form 8B, he can't, the registry's not going to see that this is, so it's a title thing. It closes it out, right. It's, and it also closes it out for us. Right, it's outstanding. If that's not in there, it's still outstanding. Yeah, I mean, if, if we just... We're just helping him out, it's in my mind, because in the future, if he ever had to refinance with the way these that works these days, they're going to find it, and he's just going to be another hurdle to jump over before this happens. Well, this he was right. aware of this, both him and his wife, and <coughs> to understand that they need to refile. I've talked to him since and, the last and week. And they are going to refile, yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah. This is, 
They're just waiting for the Name paperwork and address to get. And date are gonna yep, call. that's it. Date is gonna change, but nothing else like does. Well, no, he's he's building a different size structure. Yeah, yeah. Um, he has the new plan. So the plan's been updated and stamped. Okay. So um, so we're done with that. Uh, twenty nine Gavin Circle restoration enforcement order. What's going on with 29 Gavin Circle? I have been uh, in contact with the Pistolos. Um, I have uh, just promised them that I will send that out um, also next week. Okay. And um, they're still waiting. They haven't done anything. I told them. Do they have a plan? Yeah, yeah they have a plan. plan. Yeah. Oh, you've oh, seen yeah. the plan? Yeah, so we've Very nice. approved a plan and will allow them to continue or to do that plan through an enforcement order. That's what was decided. It was done by the wetland scientists did an excellent job. And one of the steps would, they are not allowed to start until September 15th. Which is better for the grass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. back into the planting season. Wow. The crab grass. Was that in one of the packages? Yep, yep. With uh, oh, different away. planting areas. And yeah. If you'd like to look at it, let me know. Good. Um, I missed my chance. <laughs> you can always borrow it. She's going for my five. Can always borrow it. I know. Um, okay, so that's that's it for that. Just need a letter sent out for that one. For for, for the enforcement order. Right. We just have to do a new enforcement order and send that out to them. And that's okay. Just saying, mentioning the plan, mentioning the dates. And in mentioning uh, the fact that we would like some follow up next spring to see if um, yeah. everything survived. I want to make sure they, they get that so that they can't turn around and say, we didn't get it in time to get the right contractors for all the shrubs. It's time. I actually emailed her tonight trying to um, give her an additional update, but both my emails bounced. Okay. I'm not sure why. Okay. Um, 101, so administrator's report, 101 Willow Street, pervious pavement areas. Right, 101 Willow Street, that's our... Tell me where that Austin is. Austin Prep. Austin Prep. Oh, right. Oh, right, we got an email, and they're saying it's ponding. Yeah. Did, I, did everyone see this? Oh. I saw that. So I thought there was a maintenance... They, they installed it below the groundwater table is what happened. I think there was some compaction that happened there, possibly, and, and um, it's it's beyond maintenance. It has to yeah. be removed and rebuilt. You, yeah. From that picture, you can see that looks like a low point. Yeah. yeah. Right. He's but asking I don't think for some good. direction. Um, I talked to James on the phone, and he talked about regrading the area. Or installing some sort of drain in that area. If he could do a drain, that'd be great. But I don't think he can. I think groundwater is too high. That's what I think. Okay. Do they have Do they have something down down slope that they can connect to? I'm saying a structure or something. I so is this groundwater coming up? Or I asked if he had something. He thought he, he thought he could do a drain. drain might right, be yes. something. It wasn't. He wasn't happy about it. You know. I said, What do you want to do? What's no. Right. You're asking. Oh, you know, um, really it hasn't worked, uh, and he no, wants to. He wants way. those parking spots back. Yeah. So if it's you, either regraded correctly, right. yeah. and, yeah. and forget right. about this yeah. pervious pavement. Yeah. If you put a catch basin in there and tie it in, it'll just be regular. It'll be like regular pavement. But Jamie said there might be groundwater. Yeah, I mean, he'd have to. We. He'd have to be comfortable. It would work. Would you make him file for this work or just consider it part of the old project? I'd say part of the old project, yeah. but just we, need to, see his to proposed, we need to see his proposed plan, or he needs to have an engineer comfortable. I don't want him just going out there and start moving dirt. So a letter and a proposed plan and kind of like a minor plan change? Yeah, yeah something. Something, something simple with a saw cut line and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. So e even if it was regrading? And you're okay with eliminating this? Well, if he's going to regrade, is he going to rip up all that pavement? Mm. 
I don't know what he would do. I asked him what are the options, and we talked about regrading, and we talked about a storm drain. He, this is the director of the school. Yeah. He was probably an English major. It'd be nice to have an engineer he was. like he He did had speak it. very well. <laughs> he speak, he's well dressed, he's a fine educator, but I would but hope he would have I don't believe he's going to be designing this project well, either. No, I mean, I mean what, what could have happened here is they could have created a bathtub. It's a, the choker course, the entire, the entire course, the way it's set up, is about, about 30 inches deep. It's two and a half to do it right. And I'm pretty sure that that's the way they did it. Now, if it was restrictive soils all the way around it, you'd create a bathtub. It wouldn't drain anywhere. Yeah. Once those soils got filled, it wouldn't drain. Um, my my understanding is th this was bad from the get-go, so it might not have been installed correctly. So leaving whatever base is there, I think, is appropriate. And then just redo the pavement and, and grade it so it pitches one way or put a catch base in there. Yeah, I'd be good with that. that, redo, that would be fine. redo regular pavement? Regular pavement yeah. would be fine. So yeah. was that pervious pavement um, compensation <coughs> for something else that was happening? No, I think it was part of the tennis court Yeah, and they were just going to like try this this so it part was, of the it, tennis court? But it, wasn't, so. but it wasn't a clear compensation for an so. accommodation. No, they could have just been nice. Yeah, they wanted to try it. They wanted to. Yeah. Okay. I, that was my understanding. It, I don't even understand. You know, the. It's just why don't you try this too? And okay. So. So they tried it. It's not working. I remember the original application. I just don't remember the specifics. I mean, I think it was. Hey, I, it was it the same as the tennis court? Was it the same application or? Is it I don't think so. I thought it was earlier. Earlier. Okay. Okay. I it was earlier. It's yeah. It's well. It's to it's, start the yeah. Earlier. It's to the right. Right. I remember. Uh, to the left of the picture. Okay. Right. I, I don't think I was here for this application. I, was just I don't think you were. The tennis court. So, this experiment is over, right? <laughs> I, th right. I think it is. This guy needs to fix this, and we're not going to ask for pervious pavement and no. just. We do want a cat if the catch basin though, just, rather yeah, than get just. Yeah, the water out of there. Prefer, prefer a cash basin. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. better storage. Than okay. They. they it does have, it's a crazy say, spot. It, I mean, you look at that and you're saying, no, that's a great place for a storm drain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the core. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no, if, 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 that, if, he, if, if he figures that can work, that'd be a good place for it. But I, I would doubt it. But we'll see. Not a leaching cat space, and that's not going to work here. No. Um, he did say they tried to pressure wash the surface to clean out any fines, and that's the recommended method, and he it said it didn't work. So it's, I'm telling you, it's probably deeper. It's subsoil. It's subsurface problem. Either water compacted soil or something. Oh, they yeah. didn't, uh, maybe it wasn't set up correctly. Yeah. Could be. But, uh, okay, I will, um, I will um, get him out of this. Yeah. And let him proceed. Did they start oh, work on the uh, field, do you know? No, but that should be. Wow. It could be ready for September. They wanted to be ready on. for September. Yeah. Oh. Wow. I don't know what's going on. I haven't seen any trucks or anything going back. So, any, okay. Um, about this is this isn't even this isn't even under distance wise this isn't in our jurisdictional area is it so. I don't think it is I think we're responsible because this commission asked him to you do know, that hey we and now this we can stuff, relieve him to try uh, it and yeah there is a vernal pool there he might be within our feet yeah it's right there in the picture <laughs> <laughs> yeah on the pavement yeah. <laughs> so okay so, so it seems like this isn't our issue anymore. No, no, no. no and the, our issues was uh, he really just wanted to know how much how much he was going to have to jump through to, to get this. To, yeah. You know, so it's yeah. like we're just going to make this a letter and maybe just review yeah. some plans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just have this. That's, okay. That's all I needed to know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Anything else from your administrator's report? I have a few things that, that came up, but I don't know if you were going to take on some of these. Um, we had uh, 34 Oak Street. It's going to go on your site visit list next time. Yeah. No, I, so I, 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 I talked to that guy. I, I went over there. I was going there, but he told me about 8.30 at night. And he said, he's, what well, he's doing in the backyard is clearing out poison ivy and he's reseeding along the road. He's not moving. That's what he said. He's not backfilling or moving anything around. So I mean, unless we want to go out there and look at it. No, you should look. Yeah. You should. So I've had that set up for um, yeah. Monday before the next meeting. 
Okay. You should take a look. There has been some activity out there. Um, you know, there's a possibility of grading or whatnot, but it's not a lot, and it looks mostly like um, clearing out shrubs and brush. So the situation is they got this house after the, the parents have moved on, and um, did you, did they, you go they, there? that was there today. Okay. Is and it near uh, uh, West Street or near Joshua Eaton? Joshua Eaton. It's, it's like yeah, Joshua Eaton yeah. baseball the field, or whatever side, field it is, right, right there. Yeah. So it's right along, and he's clearing out those shrubs that you said yeah. were so thick. So those are getting uh, cleared out. Against the fence. So there's going to be some areas within the 100 foot, but everything looks fairly historic except for this one path that goes down around the wetlands, but he said this was just a miscommunication between him and the guy with the backhoe. And that's not a path that was dug. Um, it, it was somewhat established, and he just has been using it to get around the backside of this mound of fill. So there's... There's some stone movement, there's some, you know, like regrading, but mostly because there's been brush pulled out of the way. All that brush seems to have been pushed over this hill that's there, and uh, which has been, some of that's historic, but some of that is new. The whole place has opened up a bit, but looks like it was always that way. It's just been cleaned up, I see. Um, but I'd like some more eyes on it told him not to do any more work. He says he doesn't intend to do any more work out there. He just wanted to get this thing looking this way. But you, sh you should look at it and see if, you know, maybe all these things or that proximity to the wetlands would require an RDA kind of after the fact, or if it's just okay, if it's maintenance. Um, so that's, that's what's going to happen. He, uh, He's going to write down what he's done, and I'll send that off to the commission in the packet and um, send them some pictures. You can decide whether it's important or not. Um, as far as, like I said, it could just be maintenance. I have no idea what this place looked like before. So. Okay. Well, we'll see it next Monday. Okay. So, and then uh, moving on, we have. Um, from now. We have that letter from Sergio Rothstein. Sergio, Sergio, Ted Pastor yeah, Bean. Pastor, mm -hmm. Pastor Road. It's going to hold off on doing anything and kind of st stick to the plan as it was written in the order of conditions at the moment. Um, I just answered this email with uh, again the times that he needed to cut. Yeah, uh, that was the best thing. I You've did. already answered it. I answered this email with just yeah. reminding him of the times that he should be cutting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which was the originally agreed upon. Do you happen to remember those times? Just the it was right. like sometime early July, and then again in, in the, the fall, fall of like September or something like that. J just for the benefit of those of you who weren't on the commission at the time, we jumped through hoops to let them build that house, and we went to the limits of our policies and regulations to allow the building of that house. And this limited cutting was the um, compromise to let a building that house. And he bought that house fully aware of this. And if he wants to change it, fine. We'll certainly listen to him. But we're not obligated to, to, to change it. He would have to make the case to us. We, we, are, we are fully, um, we, we went to the limits of our, of our uh, regulations to allow the construction of that house. Sometimes that clear discussion is is great for, mm -hmm. for people to hear because mm -hmm. I, I think that he thought there was a possibility of kind of changing this around. Yeah, I guess I'm correct. Um, so here's the next thing. Eugene Benson from MACC. Um, has sent out a list of the northeast expansion of the gas line and a possible route is through Reading. I've signed us up to get um, email alerts and he's <coughs> notified us of a uh, meeting, I think it's the 30th? July 30th. Yeah, in Ashland B, Ashby. Ashby. Um, so if, if someone wants to go, that's great. I'm gonna try to go. But he's also, if, if we are chosen as a town, he will come to Reading and talk to us about our legal rights. So, would that be one of the ancillary lines? It's not the major line. It's going to be a new major line. Right, that's coming in from New York, Eddie and Draco. 
talk about it. Then they were talking about these little ancillary points that go out. Right. We, we no, already it's not one of those because that goes straight up into New Hampshire. So if you go on uh, the Pepper website, you can see kind of you can see one in from the other. I was, I was looking at it, but I didn't, I didn't see all the little spider ones coming up. I just is this going to be through an existing corridor, pi a gas pipe corridor? No, they, there, there is one in the south that runs through now, and they want to do this northern one. Right. So they're asking permission from commissions right now to do um, exploratory drilling and whatnot to figure out the best route um, and commissions are bucking that by saying this is conservation land do we have to give them permission and this is how this all started and MAC got involved. Again? Some of the commissions, uh, Georgetown and whatnot, don't want to give them permission to, to uh, do this uh, exploration in conservation land that they own or is jurisdictional. They want to deny it completely. So they wrote to uh, Eugene Benson of MACC and asked them this question, this like a firestorm of questions and answers and what it's turned into is they're gonna look into it and they're gonna start coming to every commission that's on that list right here and talk to them, but they're gonna also have that meeting that's coming up. Um, so it hasn't been determined whether you can say no or yes, but it seems to me that you, there's really no reason to say, you know, no. Well, do we know if in Massachusetts gas pipelines have condemnation authority? They, they have the right to. Because it's utility. Or something, or, they, they could enforce, I think, you that, That's what I'm asking. Yeah, I read an article in the Globe, I think, a week ago that was on that. Because the people who won't let them on the property, I heard they're being threatened by them. Mm -hmm. We'll come in and we'll do it by force. So I think there's a good possibility that it's not coming through Reading, but it may. I mean, Ash Ashby is right up by the border, and I thought that was an odd choice. Yeah. And, and I think it's going to come down, yeah. and we, so I don't I don't see why it would come right through Reading and then back up into the Ashby area, Pepperell Ashby. I think it'd be because they're. Also I think the route would be more onerous too. I mean, if you come into a more that's exactly why they're staying out of Worcester. Yeah, well, okay. So there is talk about them setting this up so it will eventually reach the ocean and they start shipping this stuff out. But it won't be used in Massachusetts as much. But so this is coming from, 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 from New York? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's coming, coming from Pennsylvania from those the fracking in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's coming up through here. So it seems you know, keep, to keep keep up with it. I'm not saying this is good or bad or whatever, but it'd be nice to you know keep up with it and see yeah. what they have to say. And yeah. um, you know, again, once they pick that route, I think what Jamie's saying is, you know, we, you know, we might be able to move it right. five feet this way or that way. But basically, that corridor is <coughs> is where it's going. Well, I remember that the, the the town engineer from Pepperell I think was saying usually you see three alternates and you can kind of pick them one, but Kinder Morgan is has one and they're not they're just That's pushing it. this one through so Chuck you signed up for um, to be on Eugene Benson's alert yeah he'll he'll and send us emails um, as one of the communities on this list and did you give him our emails I didn't give him all your emails okay. so I'm gonna give him I'm gonna give him I, I want to be on it please so. contact him he's yeah. a fellow yeah. Al yeah. Allentonian Okay. So I, I know. He's a, yeah. he's a what? Okay. He Arlingtonian. He's in Arlington. Oh, in Arlington. So. Okay. Okay. Anything so, else? Did, um, did you want to mention 10 Johnson Circle, or is that a non issue right now? No, 10 Johnson Circle is over. I mean, we just talked he's, about he's it. Just, over and over and over and over and over and over and over yeah, so. 10 Johnson. Not 5 Johnson. Oh. 10 Johnson. There's a tree that was dead that's about to fall in someone's house. And there's something you're talking oh, about, about an RDA. Yeah. That's there was a challenge. And never mind. That's nothing. Somebody called you and said that there was a dead tree in their backyard and they were having trouble. Correct. They need to decide whether they want to put Filing. a permit in or not okay. put a permit okay. in. And okay. they told me Just that. Just crossed it off my um, Requesting my a butter's notification was a burden. OK. You can add. I have one more thing. This okay. is brand new. Hot off the presses. Uh-oh. So there's a resident that um, has um, always 
Oh, the uh, yeah. Couldn't understand why there's hunting allowed right here in the Timberneck Swamp. And the town manager asked um, the chief to look into this. Which chief, fire or police? The police chief. Um, this is Deputy Chief Mark Segal. And <clears throat> he has read through our bylaw, read through the restrictions from the Conservation Commission, and he knows, of course, Mass General Law, and he says that there is a portion. The green area is privately owned, surrounded by town-owned conservation uh -huh. land. But the conservation land, has, this land has not been allowed through the conservation myth that hunting is allowed, okay? So hunting can happen in town on approved land with a bow and arrow, only during deer hunting season. Right. So I, Nabutter asked, can, can this happen? And so he's gone through this and he says, on this land here that isn't hatched and is surrounded by yellow, hunting can happen on that private property, but nowhere else. Why, it can happen on our land if we approve it. We could add this to the hunting, we could approve hunting. At Where do we area. allow it now, Bear Meadow only? Uh, the the Bear, Bear Meadow and the two, by the gun club, what are those two swamps called? Uh, Timberneck, oh this is Timberneck. Uh, aren't aren't we Timberneck. required? By, by Cedar Swamp. swamp. You can't, we can't deny hunting. We can't I can't interfere remember. With the, the Will, Will has really, Will is really up on these. I've read it. Stuff. I've read it, and it and said something that you know. Laws can't in, interfere lie. with the rights of someone to right here. Oh, lawfully here. hunt or something like that. I remember reading it some months ago. So wait, Tim, Timberneck, Timberneck is Timberneck where? is right here, but it's surrounded by development, and it's it's owned by the conservation. Commission, except for a small pocket in the center that's owned by right here. And, and the law is 500 feet from a structure. If you look at our laws, our rules, regulations, policies for uses in conservation land, I'm pretty sure it says you can hunt right. if you're 500 feet right. away from a dwelling, if right. you're in a tree stand, if you're within the, the hunting season. Right. I thought that those rules and regulations apply to all conservation lands. So when I looked into it, there was only those three <coughs> areas that were allowed. They were where, where does it say that? The policy, there was a, there was a committee set up, and there's, there's a bunch of uh, paperwork from that committee, ah. and how they determined what would be allowed, when it would be allowed, you know, no hunting on Sundays, I, things like that. I've never seen that. They always talked about North and South Cedar Swamp, and then the Bear Meadow area, I think there's there's something. Could you could you share that in our next package? Sure. And there's because all I've seen Street. is that general list of rules. So Pearl Street. So yeah. So into this, and this is Bear Meadow. So they come in through Pearl Street and then walk in maybe right there where it touches. Terry, do, uh, honey is not a lad in time ten forest, correct? Absolutely correct. not. Yeah. Not. This one says five hundred feet from the structure. Right. What about the road? 250 feet from a... 250 feet from a road? Because well, I don't have that. Just I, dangerous. Because I, I, I can't remember if it's 250 feet from a non-paved road or... I think feet. that's state law, though. I don't think Because <coughs> that Charles Street runs right through there. I think 500 feet is clear. The, yeah. I, so, so this is... So Will has looked into this. Oh, yeah, Will's been become very familiar with the... Uh, and I called the lady that is, you know, is involved here. Um, yeah, there's really Charles. nothing we can do to stop these people unless we want to start getting, you know, unless we want to put a structure on our property. And that would eliminate this whole area. But, but outside of that, it seems to me that there is an area to hunt in the no. next swamp. Now, the woman who's... Um, who's comment complained about this? Is she on Charles Street? I I, I that's my memory. Uh, I don't know if that's this. We've been getting a uh, we've been getting comments from people on Charles Street 
uh, because they would see someone walking across the road across the road from the cemetery. Yeah, um, I'm not sure if this is the same person. But I, I'm um, there certainly be a case to be made from a conservation standpoint that hunting is a beneficial use of conservation land. Gets people outside. They enjoy the. Uh, the outdoors and they become um, uh, protective of the resource. Yeah. But, but, you know, before we jump to that conclusion, not being somewhat of a person that knows a little bit about hunting, this is an area that's going to be used by about two people. So all that for two people. All what? I mean... Well, if you decide to allow hunting here on the conservation land, you're allowing two people to, oh. to, to set up their area. I mean, they can it's already sell. It's not open to the public, you're saying. So it's, like it's a private boutique. land. This is a boutique hunting area. Why is it only accessible to two people? It's not accessible to two because it, it's, it's a territorial thing. I mean, you know, it's, it's private you know, property. If someone goes and sets their stand or something like that, it's, you know, you know. It's not there the next day. That's, that's, <laughs> that's like a trap line. You don't yeah. go messing around with that. Yeah. So, um, no, it's going to be there the next day. It's, it's just, you know. Is kind of like unwritten rules, but yeah, it's not. I mean, other people can go through it, but this is not a big area. We're not going to have fifty people right. parking around. Right. No, we're not going to make any. Uh, you know, it's a it's a good area. I mean, for to have Reading to have such a place around it. You know, you, you don't even have to go too far. And you know, I agree that if you wanted to um, change the rules. There's, it qualifies in a, in a certain area right there. So that would allow hunting. But that, but that open parcel in the middle of the conservation land, in the middle of that green area, that's private land. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. So somebody just happens to own this piece of land right smack dab in the middle of a giant conservation parcel. Hey, it's probably the other way. We probably bought conservation land this person didn't sell. This yeah. was probably yeah. there, privately yeah. owned before the conservation yeah. Yeah. land. Yeah, they do. So, all right. So, um, the town manager has asked the commission to go out and take a look, and he would like um, signage out there saying that you know he wants us to approve signage saying that this is an area that people can hunt. So okay, can, saying hunting allowed. Okay, can, can you pass that policy around uh, along with our general? We have that yeah. one sheet. It was like eleven yep. general rules or fifteen yeah. or something. Like that. So this is private land that the town will put a sign up saying hunting. Is no, 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 no. Only no, on the town. Be aware, land. hunting. Oh, be aware. Allowed oh, right. during certain times. Right. Right. This is yeah. this is a. But it, but and in fact, it's you know to, it's not allowed there. I mean, Will would tell you the same thing because he's put up those signs just like I did last year. So they only go in like three areas: Bear yeah. Meadow, North and South Cedar Swamp. Yeah. That's right. it. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's safe to hunt in North and South Cedar Swamp. There's no one out there. Right. I mean, it's huge. Right. Bear Meadow. I don't understand why that ever happened. I don't either. Because you have to walk past regular old people coming, you know, with your bow and arrow, and you're Bear up in Meadow's the tree. Bear Meadow's too too busy. Seems crazy. What is it? But, you know, bow hunting is basically from a stand shooting directly at the ground. So it's not, you know, when thinking arrows aren't going to be flying out of control and you don't have to worry about, you know, ethical hunters. I mean, it's, they, they know what they're doing. Is, they're it, is, is, it, is the only way they're hunting is from stands? Yeah, that's, that's what it's what 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 just really to keep the arrows flying. Yeah, I know. Um, so, so did um, the town... It's tough going through the lungs when you're going straight down, though. It's, it's tough on the... Did, um, did the town manager, I mean, does he want, did he give you some indication as to where the signs would be? I mean. It's up to us. Well, I would, yeah. I would think that you would put it at access points, and I don't know where the access points are. And right. It doesn't, right. I mean, it's all private right. land all around it. There's no, right. there's no open access. Yeah, this is see. pretty close to where that uh, new water main is going. What new water main? Yeah, because it's Ivy. Yeah, right there, oh, Belmont oh, Ivy. Oh, oh. oh Belmont. <laughs> so you've been out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah so Belmont everyone's been. It's good, it's good deer habitat. <laughs> it is. It is. Good what? Deer, deer habitat. habitat. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. Next. Well. Yep. Um. Um. Austin Prep. We already talked about that. Um. I'm just going to mention Allison. Uh, an update about Allison Steger. Uh, she met Tuesday night uh, with the volunteer uh, subcommittee uh, here in Town Hall, and she was only there a couple of minutes, and they they approved her uh, nomination for the position. So next, um, her request to join the Conservation Commission goes to the selectmen. So that's next week. And so the next meeting we'll have her. Next meeting we should she have her. To she get, get sworn in. in. She gets sworn in the next mm -hmm. morning. So, um, so I'm hoping to make it to uh, that selectmen's meeting. Um, if I can't, you know, I'd I'd like um, I'd like uh, other people to try and make it. So I'll send an email out. And what's this? So um, this is an old uh, enforcement action that you guys gave this uh, person a ticket, two tickets for $300. My, uh, I looked through the file. He has been issued a certificate of compliance. I believe he's in, com uh, he's in compliance with what the commission asked for. And I would like permission to say, let's expunge these fines and get, wipe them off the book so I don't have to keep seeing this from from Laura, the town clerk. All of them? Both of them. Did, he, them. The did he, he, he pay the fines? He did not, but he did. You find him, you get him to be in compliance, to get his order of conditions. He received the order of conditions, so he must have become in compliance. So. Wait a minute, say that again? You, you find this person because he wasn't following the order of conditions. And he brought his property up to compliance, and then requested a certificate of compliance, which was granted. So we're done. He is qualified his for everything closed. on his order of conditions. So the fine is not needed anymore. And it's just on the books because we didn't release it before. So I'd like it to be released. And I also would like to be released because I don't remember anything about it. know anything about this. It was before my time. So it must be pretty old. And you, it's been no follow through, so it would be certainly a surprise if we take him to Superior Court at this point. Yeah. Um, I move we uh, release the fines for Daniel Cranich at Chequesset Road. Well, why didn't he pay the fines? I don't understand how. We, we, I have never issued a fine here, and this is the only one I've seen, so I don't know the process if that you. The, why, why didn't he pay the fine? So if you don't pay the fine, you got to go to court. So no one took him to court. That's really the, the answer. I don't, I don't no one know. took him to Superior Court to say this guy, Mitch Gentleman, has to pay. Well, that's <coughs> actually what we should have done is not issue the certificate of compliance until he paid right. his fine. I think it's all water over the dam at this point. I, I guess that's true. You shouldn't have written the fine unless you wanted it to be paid. And it, the two may have not had anything to do with each other. So, My guess is, when did you start working here? Uh, three years ago, July. Okay, my guess is we issued this fine and then Fran left and nobody followed up. But wait, but wait a minute. Was it a fine or just a violation? It's a violation. Um, well, it's if it's just a violation. I think it's only a violation. It's a notice of violation. Right. Oh, I actually have tickets for that stuff? <laughs> we have a new ticketing book. Oh, I, I brought right. this just to show you <laughs> that. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. That if needed, you, you know, I can write these. Okay. Is that notice of violation the same thing as an enforcement order? No. What is it? It's just, um, it's, it's, we have finding ability here in town, and as the agent, I can write a fine up to $300 a day, and as I just need to note the bylaw that's been violated. A actually, Chuck, if you look in the regulations, there's a table in there mm -hmm. that says what the fine is, and it varies for different, for different violations. Right. 
But my my point I, is yeah, I'm aware of that. my point is I don't remember any of these people having fines. The only fine I remember was on Sunset, the guy with the driveway that that uh, yeah. kept saying he was going to do it and he never did it, and we finally fined him. And I was I was a member on the board. The rest of those are only the green ones are conservation. The other ones like planning and oh. you know. Oh, mm -hmm. building. And I remember this guy's name, but I don't ever remember. The only person I remember finding was that uh, Sunset Road. You know, the one oh, up by Wood End School. No, um, he had that driveway on the side with the car, and he, he refused to put a wall. Or he said he was going to put the wall in, and he didn't. Oh, we never yeah, find yeah, him. Yeah, Wood End. Yeah, we Wooden. never find him. No, though, I don't think. I think we did. I think we find him, and that finally got him in here. We did get him in here, yeah, and he wouldn't shut up once he came in. But, but, what, I'm, but what I'm saying is, I don't ever recall prior to that finding anybody. It never got to that. So what I'm saying is, maybe he was issued a violation without a fine. Is that possible? Could we do that back then? Maybe maybe Fran did that without a dollar amount. Is without that a dollar. Amount. No, this is indicating there's two three hundred dollar violations. Oh, all right. I don't I don't remember that. Doesn't that was it? I thought that it, it what didn't, didn't print tell. up great, but I thought it showed that. No, not, no, no, no. No, it here. doesn't show. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. I'm not yeah. So that's that. a six hundred. You're you're releasing six hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, if however, if it's been closed. Yeah. And we issued an we I mean. You right, sure wrong, we, or other. Are you sure we issued so a... Certificate of I'll check one line. more time tomorrow, just to make sure, but... If I don't think we can get the money. If it's closed out... Even if we try. Well, well if, from if the town we manager, haven't issued an order of... Uh, if we have, I'm saying... If we have, I, you're right. I mean, but I if we if, have not, we could. But I'm saying if we took it to court, I think they would say... You know, no, I don't think we'd say yeah, court, but if we haven't issued an order of compliance... Right. I don't think we should issue it until he pays his fine. That's what I think. I think it's issued. I, I, I checked on it. That's why I mm -hmm. brought it here and I asked you for that. So I'll check again, but I'm, I'm you know, I'm, well, I'm if, well checked, if you believe you've checked, I mean, then you've checked. It's been so issued. That's okay. Well, so then. When it came so to me, I said, well, what's this all camp? about? And I did just a few things and I right away found the, the uh, certificate of compliance. All right. Well, okay. Let's vote. So I made a motion to. Uh, to Release to admit that's the right wording here. It seems to be failing me. Um, waive to waive the collection of these fines because it's a uh, the matter's been closed. So and then now that all the old ones are gone, I'll just I talked to Bob Lalashore, mm -hmm. town manager today, about fines, just to make sure that um, I understood how he wants it to go. So if we're writing a fine. It has nothing to do with a bartering system. If, if there's a fine out there, it's going to be collected. It's not going to be bartered out for work or for an order of conditions or as a pressuring someone to complete it. So we are, he does not want us to write these and, and not then, and then yeah, and then, So yeah. if they're written, you're so going to be collecting and they're okay with going to Superior Court to get them. This is, yeah. a, this, a, this is a last resort if someone is just not, then we write them the fine. Oh, it's up, Jamie. I'm not sure I understand what Bob's saying. He's saying don't write the fine you unless, unless, you, collect. Intend unless to collect. you intend to collect. Well, I think our history is we don't. That's what right. he's saying. Right. So Stop doing that. that. Exactly. We can't, we can't they either don't write he them or. He, he didn't say, look. I want you to know that the conservation, he didn't say anything like that. He just said his policy and how he's going to go, how he does it, is if you write a fine, this town collects on the fines. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Other towns don't, but he, this is how it's going to be here in Reading. Okay. There's no box okay. on there for warning, huh? <laughs> no, but, you know, you could, you yeah. know, you could, it could be 15 bucks. I mean, you could, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. So I made a motion to to um, strike these fines. Is there a second? Oh, sorry. All those in favor? Okay. All right. Let's see. Is there anything else? Uh, the minutes. And these, unfortunately, were not emailed out or sent the packet. So. going to take a minute to look at it.
it's not on a motorcycle. Oh, it's gonna rain. Yeah, it's gonna rain. So it's close. It's imminent. It's <laughs> really close. In the next hour, we're gonna be rained on. Crossing over 93 right now. Did you drive your motorcycle? I did not. Okay. That's thunder, isn't it? That's thunder right there, yeah. It's Sounds like a motorcycle. That's, no, that's, like, no. that's rolling thunder. <laughs> rolling thunder. That's a northeast thunderstorm right there. Quick moving. Quad. <laughs> Shaft driven. <laughs> Yours in shaft driven. Belt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To, to work, I guess. To work, but not, not, not here. I move we approve the minutes of the meeting on the 9th of July. I submitted. I'll second. All those in favor? Okay. Any other, uh, any other business? Hearing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. <laughs> All right, I'll move to adjourn. Seconded? Okay. Second. Meeting adjourned.